All praises to the Most High. So tonight's topic is called the principles of fasting. The principles of fasting. We're going to be going over that this day. How to fast, how to fast the right way and for the right reason. Okay? Let's open up with the book of Joel. Joel chapter 2 verse 12. Let's start there. Joel chapter 2 and verse 12. Joel chapter 2 verse 12. Go ahead. Therefore also now, saith the Lord, turn ye even to me with all your heart, and mm -hmm. with fasting, and with weeping, and with mourning. Read that again, verse 12. Joel chapter 2, verse 12. Read. Therefore also now, saith the Lord, turn ye even to me with all your heart, mm -hmm. and with fasting, and with weeping, and with mourning. So the Lord is saying, we must turn unto him with all our hearts, with fasting, with weeping and with mourning. You understand? So this is about fasting. When we fast, we must be weeping. We must be mourning in spirit. Okay, come on. And rent your heart mm -hmm. and not your garments. Right. And turn unto the Lord your God. For he is gracious and merciful, slow to anger and of great kindness and repented him of the evil. You see that thing right there? He says, and rent your heart and not your garments. This is a famous speech in the Christian church. I'm going to deal with it in a second. Read verse 12 again. Let's deal with verse 12. Let's start there. Okay, come on. Joel chapter 2, verse 12. Go ahead. Therefore also now, saith the Lord, turn ye even to me with all your heart, and with fasting, and with weeping, and with mourning. So now let's understand the proper way to fast according to the Bible. You understand? The way to fast. Then we'll deal with what it means. When you're fasting, you rent your heart, not your garment. We can understand what that means in a, in a while. So pay close attention. Let's get to the book of Jonah, chapter 3, verse 5. Let's understand what it means to properly fast according to the scriptures. Jonah, chapter 3, verse 5. Let's read that. Jonah, chapter 3, verse 5. Go ahead. So the people of Nineveh believed God and proclaimed the fast. They did what? And put on sackcloth and proclaimed the fast. The people of Nineveh believed God because this is when we were slaves under the Assyrian Empire. You understand? We were slaves under the Assyrian Empire. Nineveh is the capital city of Assyria. Okay? Read that verse again, verse 5. Jonah chapter 3, verse 5. Go ahead. So the people of Nineveh believed God and proclaimed the fast. Mm -hmm. And put on sackcloth from the greatest of them even to the least of them. They put on sackcloth from the greatest and to the least of them. We want to understand what it means when they put on sackcloth. Go ahead, jump down to verse 7 now. So the people of Nineveh, our people in the land of Nineveh, were fasting, okay? Now he's going to explain to you what it means to properly fast according to the Holy Scriptures. Come on. Jonah chapter 3 verse 7. Come on. And he caused it to be proclaimed and published through Nineveh by the decree of the king and his nobles, saying, let neither man nor beast, herd nor flock, taste anything. Let them not feed, nor drink water. So now he's explaining to you the proper way to fast. It says what? Let neither man nor beast, herd nor flock, that goes into your livestock, taste anything. Let them not feed, nor drink water. So the proper way to fast is that what? You don't eat, you don't drink, nothing goes into your mouth. For 24 hours, nothing goes into your mouth. That is the proper way to fast. You understand? The Most High God has taught us how to fast the right way. Give me that in First Ezra chapter 9, verse 1. First Ezra chapter 9, verse 1. First Ezra chapter 9, verse 1. Come on. Then Ezra, rising from the court of the temple, went to the chamber of Joanan, the son of Eliasim. Right. And remained there and did eat no meat nor drink water, mm -hmm. moaning for the great iniquities of the multitude. You see that thing? Moaning for the great iniquities of the multitude. What was he doing? He was fasting, he says, and remained there and did, and did, and did, he says, and did eat no meat nor drink water. What was he doing? He was moaning for the great iniquities of the multitude. So he wasn't just fasting for himself, but he was fasting for the great iniquities of the multitude. He was doing it to do what? To cleanse his people from sin. Go ahead. 
And there was a proclamation in all Jewry and Jerusalem to all them that were of the captivity, mm -hmm. that they should be gathered together at Jerusalem. That they should be gathered together at Jerusalem. Because right now we are no longer in Jerusalem, but we are Jerusalem. You understand? We are in the lands of our captivity, but we are Jerusalem. Understand that? And so Ezra was fasting for our people when in the, in, in the land of the Persians and Medes. Okay? That's what our forefather Ezra did. This is the proper way to fast. Because what you hear in the Christian church, even in the world, they, 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 they talk about a thing called the Daniel fast. There's no such thing in the Bible called the Daniel fast. You're not going to find it. Because when you, when you read about the Daniel fast, they are eating fruit and veggies, they are drinking water. That's not a fast. You understand? That's just a diet. There's no such thing as a Daniel fast in the Bible. Because this is where they get that so-called Daniel fast wrong. Give me that in Daniel 1 verse 5. We're going to read that. Daniel chapter 1 verse 5. I need to shut this. I, I need to shut that thing down. So nobody gets confused. They talk about, oh, what about the Daniel fast? There's no such thing. Let's read that. Give me Daniel 1 verse 5. Daniel chapter 1 verse 5. Go ahead. And the king appointed them a daily provision of the king's meat mm -hmm. and of the wine which he drank. So nourishing them three years, that at the end thereof they might stand before the king. So it's talk about Daniel. So the, so the, this, the eunuch was, is going to do what? He's, he's going to appoint da, unto Daniel and his brothers, you understand, the king's meat and of the wine which he drank to nourish them so that they can what? At the time appointed, after three years, they'll be able to appear before the king. You understand? So keep reading. Watch this. Come on. Now among these were of the children of Judah, Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah. So we've got Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah. These are their God-given names, right? But when we were in Babylon, they changed our name. So, so is all the other captivities that we've been under. They kept changing our names from the time of what? Egypt, they changed our names. You understand? In Assyria, they started to change our names and so on and so forth. Now we are in Babylon. Their name changed also. They are changing our names. Watch this. Come on. And to whom the prince of the eunuchs gave names. You see that thing? So the prince of the eunuch gave to Daniel, Ananiah, Mishael, and Azariah. He gave them new names. Right? For he gave unto Daniel the name of Belteshazzar. Belteshazzar, in the honor of the Babylonian god. Come on. And to Ananiah of Shadrach. Mm -hmm. And to Mishael of Meshach. And Come to on. Azariah of Abednego. So he gave them new names. Watch this. Come on. But Daniel purposed in his heart that he would not defile himself with the portion of the king's meat. You see that thing? So Daniel, our forefather, is a he purposed in his mind that He's not going to defile himself with the portion of the king's meat. Remember, the nations, they worship other gods. They, they, they worship other gods, you understand? They sacrifice even the food they eat unto their idols. They say, listen, I don't want to defile myself with the portion of the king's meat. Right? Nor with the wine which he drank. Right? Therefore, he requested of the prince of the eunuchs that he might not defile himself. So he spoke to the kings of the eunuchs and listen, I don't want to defile myself. So we're not going to eat the king's meat. We're not going to drink the king's wine. You understand? Go ahead. Now God had brought Daniel into favor and tender love with the prince of the eunuchs. You see that thing? So he had he found favor. Daniel found favor with the prince of the eunuchs. All this, give me Proverbs chapter 3 verse 5 real quick. He found favor with the prince of the eunuchs in Babylon. Proverbs chapter 3 verse 5. Read that. Start of verse 1. Proverbs 3 verse 1. Watch this. Come on. Proverbs chapter 3 verse 1. Read. My son, forget not my law, mm -hmm. but let thine heart keep my commandments. You see that thing? But let thine heart keep, thy, keep my commandments. This is an instruction to a son from a father. Read. For length of days and long life mm -hmm. and peace shall they add to thee. That's Exodus 20 verse 12. Come on. Let not mercy and truth forsake thee. Bind them about thy neck. Write them upon the table of thine heart. The table of your heart is your mind. The table of your heart is your mind. It says, write these laws upon the table of your heart. 
that your mind. Come on. So shall thou find favor and good understanding in the sight of God and men. Read that again, verse 4, because Daniel, this is what he found. He found favor, good understanding in the sight of God and the prince of the eunuchs in Babylon. Read again, verse 4. Come on. Proverbs chapter 3, verse 4. Read. So shall thou find favor and good understanding in the sight of God and men. When you keep God's commandments, you write the laws of God in the table of your mind, meaning what? You observe and obey and do what this Bible says. He says you're going to find favor and good understanding in the sight of God and men. So let's go back. Daniel chapter 1. Daniel 1 verse 9. Come on. Daniel chapter 1 verse 9. Read. Really? Now God had brought Daniel into favor and tender love with the prince of the eunuchs. That's what we read in Proverbs 3 verse 1 through 4. Come on. And the prince of the eunuchs said unto Daniel, I fear my lord, the king, who has appointed your meat and your drink. For why should he see your faces worse liking than the children which are of your sort? Mm -hmm. Then shall he make me endanger my head to the king. He said, listen, if I don't give you this food as per I was instructed, guess what? I'm in danger. The king will have my head. I'm going be, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to be beheaded. So he's saying, I don't want to be beheaded. Watch this. Come on. Then said Daniel to Melza, whom the prince of the eunuchs had set over Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah. Read. Prove thy servants, I beseech thee, ten days, and let them give us pulse to eat and water to drink. So he said, test your servants. Okay, test us. I beseech thee, he says, for ten days, let them give us, give us pulse, goes into what your fruits and veggies, to eat and water to drink. You understand? That's what he's asking. He says, test your servants. You understand? Because the unit, the prince of the unit was saying, listen, because if I don't give you meat and the wine to drink and all that, by the time you appear before the king, you're going to look with us. You're going to look thin. You're going to look unhealthy. So Daniel says, okay, test us then. You give us fruit. You give us water. We're going to have that. You understand? So, and in 10 days' time, you will see whether we're going to be with us or not. So go ahead. Then let our countenances be looked upon before thee and the countenance of the children that eat of the portion of the king's meat. And as thou seest, deal with thy servants. He says, deal with your servant if at the end of 10 days, we, we look with us. You understand? Go ahead. So he consented to them in this matter and proved them 10 days. Come on. And at the end of 10 days, their countenances appeared fairer and fatter in flesh than all the children which did eat the portion of the king's meat. You see that thing? He says, at the end of 10 days, they look, they look what? They look handsome. They look fatter in flesh than all the children who did eat the king's meat. You understand? They look better. Okay, go ahead. Thus Melza took away the portion of their meat and the wine that they should drink and gave them pulse. Go ahead. As for these four children. From that, that point forth, he continued gave them pulse going forward. Read. As for these four children, God gave them knowledge and skill in all learning and wisdom. Mm. And Daniel had understanding in all visions and dreams. You see that thing? Daniel had understanding in all visions and dreams. He understood the visions that are written in this book to interpret them. Go ahead. Now at the end of the days that the king had said he should bring them in, then the prince of the eunuchs brought them in before Nebuchadnezzar. You see that thing? So at the end, remember the end was what? What we read here says, at the end of what? At the end, he says them for three years. That means three years later. Go ahead. And the king communed with them, and among them all was found none like Daniel, Hananiah, mm. Mishael, and Azariah. Read. Therefore stood they before the king. They stood before the king. Come on. And in all matters of wisdom and understanding that the king inquired of them, he found them ten times better than all the magicians and, and astrologers that were in all his realm. You see what he's saying? He says, Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah, says they were ten times better than their magicians and astrologers. Meaning what? They are wise men. They are ten times better. Because why? We better. We better than all these nations. That's what you need to understand. This is Deuteronomy 7 verse 50. 
understand that thing. Go ahead. Come on. And Daniel continued even unto the first year of King Cyrus. Because even when the patients took over, Daniel was there advising them. You understand? So what I'm showing you here, there's no such thing as a Daniel fast. Daniel wasn't fasting. Daniel and all his brethren, they were not fasting. So this thing called the Daniel fast, that's not in the Bible. You understand? That is not in the Holy Bible. Give me, um, because the thing of eating healthy and all of that, that's always been in our DNA because that is the law that was given to us. Watch this. Give me second Ezra 9, verse 23. I'm going to give you an example here. Another example. Ezra was not fasting. Okay? Just like Daniel, Mishael, Hananiah, and Azariah, they were not fasting. But watch what happened here. Second Ezra 9. Start of verse 23. Second Ezra chapter 9, verse 23. Read. Nevertheless, if thou wilt cease yet seven days more, but thou shalt not fast in them. You see that thing? But thou shalt not fast in them. Don't fast in these seven days that I'm going I'm to instruct you. But the Lord is going to tell Ezra what he wants Ezra to do. Come on. But go into a field of flowers where no house is built mm -hmm. and eat only the flowers of the field. Taste no flesh, drink no wine, but eat flowers only. You see what he's saying? He says, taste no flesh, meaning don't eat meat, don't drink wine, but eat flowers only. Flowers goes into fruits and veggies. You understand? That's why when you go to Woolworth, you'll, you'll find these edible flowers and all that. Yes, it's going into the earth, fruits and veggies. Come on. And pray unto the highest continually. Then will I come and talk with thee. Read verse 25 again, I'm sorry. Second Ezra chapter 9, verse 25. Wait. And pray unto the highest continually. Then will I come and talk with thee. He says, and then while you're eating, while you're having fruit and veggies and all that, he says, pray unto the highest continually. Then I will come and talk with you. Okay? Because guess what? That's why it's important to detox. That's why it's important to eat fruit and veggies. Because why? They help with what? With, uh, with, the, with the healthy metabolism. Your healthy immune system, healthy skin, healthy hormone balance and all that stuff. Yes. Go ahead. So I went my way into the field, which is called Adas, like as he commanded me. Right. And there I sat among the flowers mm -hmm. and did eat of the herbs of the field and the meat of the same satisfied me. You see what he's saying? It says, and did eat of the herbs of the field and the meat of the same satisfied me. So the meat of the fruits and the veggies, like bananas and grapes and apples, so on and so forth. So he says they satisfied, they satisfied him. So he wasn't fasting, but the Lord said, listen, this is what you're going to eat. I'm giving you a strict diet for these seven days because I want you to detox and all of that. Guess what? That also helps for the Lord to deal with you because you're eating healthy, you're cleansing your body and all that. This is detox. Understand that, but this is not a fast. A fast is where you don't eat, you don't drink, nothing goes into your mouth for 24 hours. From sundown to sundown, nothing goes into your mouth. That's a proper fast right there. You understand? So let's go back now. Go back to Joel. Joel 2, read verse 12 again. Let's go back to Joel 2, verse 12. Joel chapter 2, verse 12. Go ahead. Therefore also now, saith the Lord, turn ye even to me with all your heart and mm -hmm. with fasting. And with weeping and with moaning. You say we fasting, weeping, and with moaning. So the subject matter here is about fasting. It's about fasting. Okay, come on. And rent your heart and not your garments. Right. And turn unto the Lord your God. For he is gracious and merciful, slow to anger, and of great kindness, and repented him of the evil. Now watch this. It says, when you're fasting, it says you must rent your heart. The word rent means to what? You must tear. It says, tear your heart, but not your garment. You understand? Because during this time, how the, during when we were fasting, there's something that we put on to show that we fasting. You understand? I'll give you an example of what I mean by that. I'm going to come back to the part when it says, range your heart. Um, let's deal with the garment part. Watch this. Give me Jonah 3 verse 6. Jonah chapter 3 verse 6. It says, range your heart. Your heart is your mind. We're going to read about that in a, in a second. But let's deal with the garment part. Jonah 3. Read verse 6. Jonah chapter 3 verse 6. 
Come on. For word came unto the king of Nineveh, and he arose from his throne, and he laid his robe from him, and covered him with sackcloth and sat in ashes. You see that thing? It says he covered him with sackcloth and sat in ashes. Sackcloth and sat in ashes. Sackcloth goes into what is called Bele. I'll show you what that is. Bele. That's what they call it. The Bele sack. Bele. Yeah. It's itchy. And this is what we would wear when we were fasting. You understand? Obviously, they're going to show, show you my here wearing this stuff. But, um, okay. Let me just share my screen so you can see it. So, um, can you see my screen? Yes, sir. Okay. So, what you're looking at here, the sack cloth is belly. They call it belly. Okay. Is this sack is the clothing that is made out of this, out of sack, sack cloth. Okay. It's a sack clothing. It was itchy. You understand? So while you're wearing it, while you're fasting, you'll what? You'll have to enjoy the itchiness, but everybody will be seeing that, okay, he's afflicting his soul, he's fasting. You understand? You would have to look like that so people can see that you was fasting. That's how we did it back then. You understand? So go back to um, Jonah 3 verse 6 again. Jonah chapter 3 verse 6. For word came unto the king of Nineveh, and he arose from his throne, and he laid his robe from him, and covered him with sackcloth and sat in ashes. Okay, jump down to verse 8. Verse 8. But let man and beast be covered with sackcloth. He says, but let man and beast be covered with sackcloth. Come on, in Bella, read. And cry mightily unto God. Yea, let them turn everyone from his evil way mm -hmm. and from the violence that is in their hands. You see that thing? So when we did that, we did that so that the Lord can see that we fasting. You understand? We are flicking our soul. That's why it says, rend your heart, not your garment. You understand? Don't take off. Don't, don't take off your regular clothes and put on belly so you can show that you are fasting. He says, don't do that now. Because he's what? He's prophesying about when Christ will come, the way in which we fast, the Lord is going to explain to us how we must do it. You understand? How we must look when we're doing it, rather. Okay, read on. Come on. Verse Jonah nine. chapter 3, verse 9. Read. Who can tell if God will turn and repent mm -hmm. and turn away from his fierce anger that we perish not. Because guess what? While they were fasting, this is what was what? This is what was in their heart. They were hoping that the Lord would do what? Will turn his anger from them that they perish not. That he doesn't, that he don't put us to death. Right? And God saw their works. So when the Lord saw them afflicting their soul, you understand? Putting on sacrifice to show that we're fasting. We want to get our mind right. We are weeping. We are mourning. We are sorry for what we've done. We regret what we've done. Go ahead. That they turned from their evil way, mm -hmm. and God repented of the evil that he had said that he would do unto them, and he did it not. You see that thing? So what's happening is that, what, ha what would happen is that, because a lot of the times when we were fasting as Israel, we would do it, but we were not sincere in the evil that we've done. You understand? But I just wanted to show you that uh, when it says, rend your heart, not your garment, the garment goes into what? Say cloth, which is bare because that's what we would put on while we are on the fast, okay? Go back to Joel now. Joel 2, read verse 13 again. Joel chapter 2, verse 13. Come on. And rend your heart and not your garments. He says, rend your heart, meaning tear your heart and not your garments. You understand? Read. And turn unto the Lord your God, for he is gracious and merciful, slow to anger, and of great kindness and repented him of the evil. Okay, read verse 13 again. Joel chapter 2, verse 13. Mm -hmm. And rend your heart and not your garments. So it says, rend your heart and not your garment. What does it mean to rend your heart? Rend your heart. Let's understand what is your heart. Give me that in Mark 7, verse 21. Let's understand what it means when it says your heart. What does it mean? What is it making reference to? Mark chapter 7, read verse 21. So we understand what, what is the heart. Okay, come on. Mark chapter 7, verse 21. Read. 
for from within out of the heart of men proceed evil thoughts you see that thing from from within out of for from within out of the heart of men proceed evil thoughts because your heart does not think your mind does not what your heart doesn't think meaning what the vein that the, the organ that that is sitting in your chest pumping blood it doesn't think so he's, he's not talking about your heart he's talking about your mind because he says proceed evil thoughts 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 your mind is what thinks your mind is where the thoughts come from okay read verse 21 again mark chapter 7 verse 21 read for from within out of the heart of men proceed evil thoughts mm -hmm. adulteries fornication murders read thefts covetousness wickedness deceit lasciviousness an evil eye, blasphemy, pride, foolishness. Right? All these evil things come from within and defile the man. You see what he's saying? All these evil things. So adultery, fornication, murder, theft, covetousness, wickedness, deceit, lasciviousness, evil eye, blasphemy, pride, foolishness. These are evil things. It says they come from within, meaning your mind, and they defile you. You understand? Because all these things, are, as these aforementioned things, these are evil things that are not supposed to be in us, but they are. That's why we need the laws of God to drive them out. You understand? So go back to Joel 2 verse 13 again. Now we understand what the heart is and what's in the heart. Okay, come on. Joel chapter 2 verse 13. Read. And rend your heart and not your garments. Rend your heart. Rend your heart. Your heart is your mind. To rend means to tear your mind up, afflict your mind, hard, examine it. You understand? Examine it. So during your fast, your job is to rend your heart, you examine your mind because we know what's in it. The Lord told us in Mark 7, 21 through 23, what's in our mind. You understand? What, watch this. Give me Isaiah 58, verse 3 now. Isaiah 58, verse 3. Okay. He says, rend your heart, not your garment. Your mind is, your heart is your mind. We know what's in your mind, evil things which define you. Okay? Isaiah 58 verse 3. Come on. Isaiah chapter 58 verse 3. Read. Wherefore have we fasted, say mm -hmm. they, and thou seest not? You see that? He says, wherefore have we fasted, say they. Meaning the Israelites, God says, we say we fasted. Why did we fast? That's what we say. Go ahead. Wherefore have we afflicted our soul and thou okay. takest no knowledge? Wherefore have why did we afflict our soul and the Lord is not taking any knowledge of what we're doing? That we, we are afflicting our soul, we're putting on sackcloth and all that. He says, This is what we say in our mind. He says, Why are we we are fasting? This is what we say, but thou seest not, but the Lord is not seeing it. You understand? Wherefore have we afflicted our soul? Because to fast means to afflict your soul, to rend your heart. You understand? To rend your heart, you must examine your head. What's in it? Come on. Behold, in the day of your fast, you find pleasure. He says, but he said, look, in the day of your fast, you Israelites, when you say you're fasting, you are finding pleasure. Meaning what? You're still pleasuring your flesh during the fast. The Lord says, you mustn't do this. You understand? Because the whole point of the fast is to what is to crucify your flesh. Is to deny your flesh of the things that it needs so that your spirit can be strong. Go ahead. Behold, in the day of your fast, you find pleasure and exert all your labors. You see that thing? You exert all your labors. You find things to do so you don't have to deal with the fact that you are afflicting your soul. You find things to do to push time so that the fast can be over. The Lord says, that's not the fast. I'm not looking, that's not the type of fast I'm looking for. So to afflict your soul to, is to rend you rending your heart. You examine yourself during the fast. And why are you examining yourself? Why are you rending your heart? Why are you afflicting your soul? Is because you want the Lord to forgive, to go forgive you of the sins that you are in the midst of. You want the Lord to forgive you. You want the Lord to hear your prayers. You understand? So the most high God can help you to overcome can strengthen your spirit, your mind, so you'll be able to overcome. That's what he's saying right there. Go ahead. Behold, 
he fasts for strife and debate mm. and to smite with the feast of wickedness. You see what he's saying? He says, behold, he fasts for strife and debate. He says, while you're fasting, you are what? You're arguing back and forth and all that. You're debating. You're blaming each other. Okay? The Lord says, when you fast, you mustn't be doing that because when you're fasting, you're examining yourself. Okay? Come on. He shall not fast as he do this day to make your voice to be heard on high. He says, when you're fasting, don't make your voice to be heard on high. Because your job is to what? To sit down and examine yourself. You understand? So when it says, go back to Joel 2, verse 18 again. Let's go back here. Joel 2, verse 13. I'm coming back here to Isaiah 58. But I want to go back to Joel. Okay, Joel 2, verse 13. One more again. Joel 2, verse 13. Read. And rend your heart and not your garments. Rend your heart, not your garment. Meaning examine your mind. You understand? Your garment goes into sackcloth. He says, don't tear the cloth and put on sackcloth and all that. He says, don't do that. The Lord is going to teach us how we must supposed to look like when we fast. Watch this. Give me the book of Mark. I mean, Matthew chapter 6, verse 16. Matthew 6, verse 16. So Christ is going to teach us how we must look. When we fasting, there's no need for us to be putting on bellet or sackcloth to make to when to, to so everybody can see that we fast. This is what the Lord is telling us that we must do now under Christ. Watch this. Come on. Matthew chapter 6, verse 16. Read. Right? Moreover, when ye fast, be not as the hypocrites mm -hmm. of a sad countenance, for they disfigure their faces that they may appear unto men to fast. Read. Verily I say unto you, they have their reward. You see what the Bible is saying? It says, moreover, when you fast, you Israelites, it says, don't be as the hypocrites are of a sad countenance. Because you're fasting, because when you're fasting, you are not eating, you are not drinking, nothing goes into your mouth. You understand? You're examining yourself. You're reigning your heart. You're getting your mind right. You understand? you in investigating, examining, and understanding the things that you're dealing with so you can what? Get rid of them so the Lord can forgive you so you can overcome. So it says, don't look like the hypocrites where you making funny faces and people be asking you, hey, what's wrong with you? No, I'm fasting. The Lord says, that's your reward right there. He says, don't look like you're fasting. You understand? Don't look like you're fasting. Pray. But thou, when thou fastest, he says, when you're fasting, don't appear to men that you're fasting. Don't look like you're fasting. Look normal. You understand? Look your normal self. Because why? What you're doing is between you and the Lord. You understand? Okay, come on. Matthew chapter 6, verse 17. Read. Right? But thou, when thou fastest, anoint thine head and wash thy face. You see what he's saying? He says, but you Israelites, when you fast, anoint thine head and do what? And wash thy face. And wash thy face. He says, anoint your head and wash your face. Meaning what? Take a bath. You understand? Put lotion on. Put cologne on. Smell good. You understand? Comb your hair. Look proper. Look presentable. Don't be looking like you're about to drop dead. Don't look nasty. That's what he's saying. Okay, come on. That thou appear not unto men to fast. Mm -hmm. But unto thy father, which is in secret. But you must, you must what? It says, you must what? Read that verse again. Read that verse again. Come on. Matthew chapter 6, verse 18. Mm -hmm. That thou appear not unto men to fast, but unto thy father, which is in secret. Read, which is in secret. In secret. Only you and the father know that you're fasting. Right? And thy father, which seeth in secret, shall reward thee openly. And your father will see it in secret, the Lord will reward you openly. You understand? The thing that you used to struggle with, all of a sudden you are able to overcome. You understand? The Lord will reward you openly. The people will see it. That's what he's saying right there. You understand? So go back to Isaiah. Go back to Isaiah now. 58. Isaiah 58. Read verse 3 again. Isaiah chapter 58 verse 3. Mm -hmm. Wherefore have we fasted, say they, and thou seest not? Wherefore have we afflicted our soul, and thou takest no knowledge? Behold, in the day of your fast you find pleasure, and exact all your labors. So the Lord says, when we fasting, 
guess what? We must not find our pleasure and we must not exert all our labor. We must look what? We must look presentable. We must not appear unto men to fast. That's what he's saying. Go ahead. Behold, ye fast for strife and debate and to smite with the feast of wickedness. Ye shall not fast as ye do this day to make your voice to be heard on high. Yes. Is it such a fast that I have chosen? A day for a man to afflict his soul? Is it to bow down his neck as a bulrush and to spread mm. sackcloth and ashes under him? Go ahead. Will thou call this a fast and an acceptable day to the Lord? You see what the Lord is asking? Is it, is it such a fast that I have chosen? Is this the type of fast that I taught you to, to do? He says, no, that's not the fast I'm looking for. Are you understand? It says, a day for a man to afflict his soul. Is it to bow down his head as a bulrush? You looking down, looking all sad. The Lord says, don't do that. And to spread sackcloth and ashes under him. That's why it says, rend your heart, not your garment. Okay? Will thou call this a fast, an acceptable day for the Lord? The Lord says, ah, that's not the fast I'm looking for. I will not accept that. I will, I'm not going to accept that. Okay? Go ahead. Watch this. He's going to tell you the type of fast he's looking for. Great. Is not this the fast that I have chosen to lose the bands mm -hmm. of wickedness? Read verse 6 again. Read Isaiah chapter 58 verse 6. Is mm -hmm. not this the fast that I have chosen to mm -hmm. lose the bands of wickedness? To do what? To lose the bands of wickedness. So the type of fast that the Lord is looking for, it says you is what? Is when you lose the bands of wickedness. That's the type of person looking for. The Lord wants you to lose the bands of wickedness. So how do you lose the bands of wickedness? You examine yourself. You understand? You become sincere in your self-examination. You lose the bands of wickedness. Give me that in 1 Peter 2 verse 1. 1 Peter chapter 2 verse 1. When you fast, you must lose the bands of wickedness. Watch this. Come on. 1 Peter chapter 2 verse 1. Right. Wherefore, laying aside all malice mm -hmm. and all guile and hypocrisy. So malice, having malicious intent to harm, and guile, that's bitterness. Okay, come on. And hypocrisies. And hypocrisies, come on. And envies and all mm. evil speakings. You see that thing? So these are the things that the Lord says we must say them aside. We must lose these bands of wickedness, malice. Guy, hypocrisy, envy, and all evil speaking. The Lord says we must lose. These are the these are some of the bands of wickedness that we must lose. The Lord says we must get rid of this when you fast. These are the bands of wickedness that we must get rid of. Give me Colossians 3, verse 5. Colossians chapter 3, verse 5. Come on. Colossians chapter 3, verse 5. Mm -hmm. Mortify therefore your members which are upon the earth. The word mortify means deaden, to deaden. That's where um, mortify, mortify, mortuary, and all that. That's where the deed names are synonymous. It says mortify meaning deaden, kill, therefore your members which are upon the earth. Because the things that what we just read in, in 1 Peter 2, verse 1, Mark 7, 21 through 22, is what? These are the members that are upon the earth that exists in us, in our mind. Okay, come on. Fornication. Fornication. So fornication, this goes into sexual sin. These are members that exist within us on earth because we are on earth and these are the members that exist within us, right? And cleanness. And cleanness, as an example, women not bathing three times a day when they are on their menstrual, nasty stuff. That's uncleanness. Having sex when you're on your period, Nastiness. Go ahead. Inordinate affection. Inordinate affection, homosexuality and all that, lesbianism. That's inordinate affection. Come on, as an example. Wait. Evil concupiscence. Evil concupiscence. That's evil sexual lust and desire. Wanting to sleep with animals. Wanting to sleep with young boys or young girls. That's evil concupiscence. Watching porn, masturbating. That's evil concupiscence. Come on. And covetousness, mm -hmm. which is idolatry. And covetousness, which is idolatry. So these are the members 
The Apostle Paul is mentioning his members that they must mortify. That's how you lose the bands of wickedness. You mortify his members. You keep them in check with the laws of God. You use God's laws to what? To combat these spirits because these are all evil spirits. You understand? Go ahead. Colossians chapter 3 verse 6. Really? For which things say the rest of God cometh on the children of disobedience. The rest of God will come upon the children of disobedience if we are meeting in the midst of these and we are not mortifying them. We are not using the laws of God to drive them out. Come on. In the which ye also walked some time when ye lived in them. You see that thing? It says, in the which ye also, meaning us, that, now that we are now in this truth, is as we walked sometimes in these things when ye lived in them. Because we lived in these things because we were without the laws of God. We were in the midst of sin. We were sinning ignorantly. Come on. Now you cannot say I'm, I was out of ignorance because now you know the law. You can't say I didn't know. Read on. But now he also put off all these anger, wrath, mm. malice, Wait. blasphemy, filthy communication out of your mouth. You see that thing? So this is the same thing that we just read in First Peter 2 verse 1. You understand? Malice, wrath, anger, blasphemy, filthy communication out of your mouth, daily talk, sexting, because they're sexting now. You understand? Sending pictures, naked pictures across these social media platforms. That's filthy communication. That's evil communication. You understand? So guess what? The Lord is saying we must what? We must put these things away. That's how you lose the bands of wickedness. So during the fast, these are some of the things that you have to examine that only you know that exists in you. You understand? You have to know you. And once you discover that this is you, your job will begin to search the scriptures, you understand, to seek counsel to say, how do I get rid of this spirit? How do I get rid of that spirit? This is during the fast. This is part of you losing the bands of wickedness during the fast. You understand? Go ahead. Lie not one to another. He says, don't bear false witness. Come on. Seeing that he have put off the old man with his deeds. We must put off the old man or old woman with his or her evil deeds. We must get rid of we must get rid of that old man. The old man is the flesh. The old woman is the flesh. You want your flesh to be satisfied. Women, you want to have sex. You want men to do stuff to you. Men, you want to have sex. And so on and so forth. I'm just using that because that's one of the biggest ones in our community. You understand? So the most High God is saying, listen, we have to do what? We have to get rid of that old man, that old woman. Read on. And have put on the new man, mm -hmm. which is renewed in knowledge after the image of him that created him. You see that thing? So now we put on the new man. The new man is when you are born again. You understand? You are renewed in the spirit of your mind. After the knowledge of the image of him that created him. The knowledge of the most High God in Christ. That's what the Lord is teaching us right there. When he says we must lose the bands of wickedness. So go back to Isaiah 58. Isaiah 58, read verse 6 again. Isaiah chapter 58, verse 6. Mm -hmm. Is not this the fast that I have chosen? To lose the bands of wickedness? You see that thing? To lose the bands of wickedness. You understand? That's what we just read. Go ahead. To undo the heavy burdens. You must, you must do what? To undo the heavy burdens. So as part of the type of fast that the Lord is looking for, it says, you must lose the bands of wickedness. You must undo the heavy burden. What does that mean to undo the heavy burden? Watch this. Give me the book of 2nd Ezra, chapter 14. 2nd Ezra 14. We're going to start at verse 13. We're going to read that. 2nd Ezra 14, verse 13. Come on. 2nd Ezra, chapter 14, verse 13. Read. Right? Now, therefore, set thine house in order. Set your house in order. Your spiritual house. You must order your spiritual house in order. Watch this. Hold this. Give me that in first period. Okay. It says set your house in order. Before you can do the you can undo the heavy burden, you set your house in order. First period. First period chapter two, verse five. Read that. First Peter chapter two, verse five. Come on. 
ye also as lively stones are built up a spiritual house you are built up a spiritual house we are lively stones now so our job is to build up the spiritual house the spiritual house is talking about us us we are the spiritual house we are that spiritual house because we are lively stones why because we receive the lively oracles that was delivered unto us which is the laws of god come on and holy priesthood and holy priesthood we are holy priesthood come on to offer up spiritual sacrifices acceptable to god by jesus christ you see that thing so in this spiritual house our job is to offer up spiritual sacrifices that are acceptable to god by jesus christ what are those spiritual sacrifices get that in chapter 35 verse 1 real quick ecclesiastes in the apocrypha chapter 35 verse 1 it says we must offer up spiritual sacrifices that are acceptable to god by jesus christ read that ecclesiastes chapter 35 verse 1 mm -hmm. he that keepeth the law bringeth offerings enough read he that taketh heed to the commandment offereth a peace offering you see that thing he that taketh he that keepeth the law you bringing offerings enough that's enough offering that's what the lord is saying he that taketh heed to the commandments, you take what? You take note of the laws of God. You take heed to them. He says you are offering a peace offering. These are spiritual sacrifices that we must offer up. You understand? That will be acceptable to God by Jesus Christ. Because the only way that the most High God is, can hear us now is through what Christ did. Because the Lord was angry with us. That's why the most High God could not accept the blood of bulls and goats anymore. You understand? That's why he allowed his son to die for us so that now the Lord can be able to hear our prayers because of what Christ did for us when he died for us. Now we present our body as a living sacrifice and we're building up the spiritual house. That's how we set our house in order. We keep the commandments of the Most High God in the faith of his son to Christ. Okay? So go back to 2nd Ezra chapter 14 verse 13 once again. Second Ezra chapter 14, verse 13. Right. Now, therefore, set thine house in order. Set your spiritual house in order. That's what the Lord is saying. Set your spiritual house in order. Come on. And reprove thy people. Then you can go out and correct your people because your mind is right. Right. Comfort such of them as be in trouble. Because comfort our people that are in the midst of sin. You bring the laws of God to them so they can repent and get their mind right. Right. And now renounce corruption. Because our people are corrupt. Our people are in the midst of corruption. Go ahead, which is sin. Sin corrupts you. Right? It corrupts you the way you think. Go ahead. Let go from the mortal thoughts. You see that thing? Let go from you these mortal thoughts. What are the mortal thoughts? The mortal thoughts is what we read in Mark 17. What? Those are the mortal thoughts. Sex, fornication, evil speech, guile. Bitterness, hatred, envy, hypocrisy. You understand? That those are those are mortal thoughts. Okay, read. Cast away the burdens of men. Cast, do what now? Cast away the burdens of men. Cast away the burdens of men. Cast away the burdens of men. Remember what we read in Isaiah. In Isaiah says what? It says to lose the burdens of wickedness. And to undo the heavy burden. The heavy burden, that's what we read here when it says, cast away the what? Cast away the burdens of men, the heavy burden. Where do they come from? Your thoughts, your mind. The things that you think about, they are not in line with the laws of God. Because without God's commandments, we are evil as hell. Without God's laws, we are evil. Understand it. As long as our people are not keeping the laws of God, they are evil as hell. So we need the laws of God for our minds to think up, to think straight. You understand? To make the right decision, sound decision. You understand? But be, without the laws of God, the mind of the black man and the black woman is evil as hell. Okay, come on. Cast away the burdens of men. Put mm -hmm. off now the weak nature. Put off now the weak nature. Because... The weak nature is what? Is these mortal thoughts that we have. The mortal thoughts is things that are contrary to the laws of God. These are mortal thoughts. 
That's what that's the weak nature. Because when you think, you think based on how you feel. You think based on your emotion. You think of based, based upon, you understand, the lust of your flesh. The Lord says, that's your weak nature. That's weak. That's being weak. You understand? So that's why I said, set your house in order. Go ahead. And set aside the thoughts that are most heavy unto thee. Mm -hmm. And haste thee to flee from these times. You see that thing? It says you must set aside. That's why it says lay aside. That's the same thing we read in First Peter. It says lay aside the thoughts that are most heavy unto thee. The thoughts that are heavy unto thee, those are the bearings of men. Those are the mortal thoughts, the evil thoughts that make us to do the things that are contrary to the laws of God, which is sin. You understand? Which corrupts the way we think. That's why the Lord says, and hate thee to flee away from these times. These times that we're living in, because we're living in an evil time. Give me Second Ezra chapter four, verse twenty-seven. Second Ezra chapter four, verse twenty-seven. Read that what you got. Second Ezra chapter four, verse twenty-seven. Read. And cannot comprehend the things that are promised to the righteous in time to come. When the Lord For is this, come on, is that we cannot comprehend the things that are promised to the righteous in time to come. The Lord says we cannot even imagine the things that he has, he has in store for us. We can read about them, but he says you can't even imagine, you can't comprehend. You understand? The things that are promised for the righteous, those that keep the law. You understand? When the Lord returns. Come on. For this world is full of unrighteousness and infirmities. You see what he's saying? He says because this world is full of unrighteousness and infirmities. That goes into disease. You understand? Is that the world is full of unrighteousness, meaning sin, and infirmities, diseases. That's why when you look at and what brings forth diseases is sin. Look at our community: high blood pressure, you understand, um, HIV, gonorrhea, syphilis, so on and so forth. Sisters cannot give birth; they can't conceive kids no more because of what adultery, abortion, so on and so forth. You understand? That's what we see. Black men end up in jail because of sin. You understand? They get in jail, they get raped by men. They catch hepatitis C. You understand? And when they get out, they sleep with women, they give it to the sister. It all is, it's all because of sin. Understand that thing? You understand? So he says, this world is full of sin and, and what? Diseases. Go ahead. Verse 28. Read. But as concerning the things whereof thou askest me, I will tell thee. For the evil is so, but mm -hmm. the destruction thereof is not yet come. You see what he's saying? He says the evil has been sown in this earth. Because evil has been sown in this earth and is thriving. But he says, but the destruction thereof is not yet come. Meaning the Most High has not what? Has not loosened his angels that are in the four corners of the earth to allow the nations to go to war. Straight full on World War Three, that hasn't happened yet. Although we are hearing of rumors of it, but it has not taken place yet. But the evil has been sown in the earth and it's thriving. You understand? So that's why he's saying what he says there in Second Ezra. Go back to Second Ezra chapter fourteen. Second Ezra fourteen. Um, read verse fifteen again. Second Ezra chapter fourteen, verse fifteen. Come on. And set aside the thoughts that are most heavy unto thee. Mm -hmm. And haste thee to flee from these times. And haste thee to flee from these times. Meaning, make haste to flee from these evil times that we're living in. How? We keep the commandments of the Most High God. That, because that's our safety net. That's our protection. That's how we're going to get delivered when the Lord returns. You understand? So watch this. Um, go back. Go back to Isaiah 58. Now read verse, verse, uh, verse 6 again. Isaiah chapter 58, verse 6. Read. Is not this the fast that I have chosen mm -hmm. to lose the bands of wickedness, to undo the heavy burdens, Read. and to let the oppressed go free, Read. and that ye break every yoke? You see what it's saying? It says what? And to let the oppressed go free. So when you fast, guess what? You deal with your issues first. You understand? You lose the bands of wickedness. You undo the heavy bearings that are in your mind. 
Then once you've done that, it says you're going to be able to, you are qualified to let the oppressed go free. You are qualified to go out there to teach your people. You are qualified because these sisters don't go out to the streets and teach, but by your good example, you'll be able to do what? To let the oppressed go free by your good example. You understand? You're going to let your light shine so the people can start to talk to you and ask you questions, and then you send them what? You send them this way so the people can come and learn. So that's why he says, and then you let the oppressed go free. You understand? Give me that in Acts chapter 10. Give me the book of Acts 10. Acts 10. Um, read verse 28. I believe that's what I want. Acts 10, because it's not in my notes. It just popped into my head. Acts chapter 10. That's it right there. Acts 10, 38. Read that for me. Acts chapter 10, verse 38. Come on. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power, Great. who went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil, mm. for God was with him. You see that thing? You see what Christ was doing? Christ was going around healing all those of Israel, all, all those Israelites that were oppressed of the devil. You understand? Because the devil is oppressing the physical devil on earth and the spiritual devil on earth. He, they are both oppressing us. Understand that? So we are oppressed. So for us to let the oppressed go free, we must let them know that we are being oppressed because of what? We are in the midst of sin, so it's easy for Satan to do what? To devour us, to destroy us. Watch this. Give me that in First Peter 5. Okay? Give me First Peter. Give me First Peter chapter 5. Read verse 8. Watch this. First Peter 5 verse 8. First Peter chapter 5 verse 8. Come on. Be sober. Be vigilant. Because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about, seeking whom he may devour. You see what he's saying? Read verse 8 again, one more again for me. Come on. First Peter chapter 5, verse 8. Be sober, be vigilant. Mm. Because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about, seeking whom he may devour. You see what he's saying? He says, be sober, be sober-minded, be vigilant. Be vigilant, be cautious. It is because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about, seeking whom he may devour. Because Satan is always seeking whom he may devour and tear up and destroy. And Satan will only pay you a visit at your lowest point. When you are at your lowest point, that's when Satan pays you a visit. When you're on, when you're on your high point, Satan will not pay you a visit. Because guess what? You are on higher left. But whenever you find yourself in the midst of sin, that's when Satan pays your visit. You understand? That's why it says he's, he's, a, he's a roaring lion walking about seeking whom he may devour, whom he may destroy. That is Job. And guess what? Watch this. Give me that in Sarah 33 verse 14. Let me show you how this works. So you understand. Sarah 33, read verse 14. I'm going to show you something this day. Okay? Because when you're fasting, you want to get your mind right. You want to get yourself correct. Here's what will happen all the time without saying. And throughout the day, if you are in the spirit, you're listening to classes, you're staying in the spirit, whether you're at work and all that, you stay in the spirit, whether you're in the taxi. When you're not in the taxi, when you're in the taxi, when you're traveling whenever, you're not at work, but you can listen to classes, guess what? You are staying in the spirit because why? You know that when you're doing good, evil is always present. So if you're not doing that, that means you're in the midst of evil. And the Lord is trying to help you to get out of that evil, and he presents the good way out. You see that thing? Read that. Sarah 33 verse 14. Watch this. Ecclesiastes chapter 33 verse 14. Read. Good is set against evil, mm. and life against death. You see that? Good is set against evil. So good is always set against evil, life against death. Throughout the day, throughout your whole day, your whole, listen, every hour of every day, guess what? Good is always set against evil. Go ahead. So is the godly against the sinner, mm. and the sinner against the godly. That's how it happens all the time. You want to keep the commandments of the Lord? Guess what? There's always going to be a, a force that is resisting to try to take you back to your sin. When you are in your sin 
And guess what? You are aware of your Israel. You must keep the commandments of the Lord. The Lord will find a way. He's, he's, tried, he's going to try to find a way for you to escape out of that thing. You men and women understand that? Yes, sir. Okay. Go ahead. Verse 15. Come on. Verse 15. So look upon all the works of the Most High. And there are two and two, one mm -hmm. against another. You see that? It's always like that. If the Most High God calls you out of your whole family, they teach you, you receive the gospel, guess what? Your whole family is going to be against you. And they might not show it. They might not be, it might not be in your face. It might not be obvious, but they'll do it in a subtle way that you don't, uh, we are not aware. Why? Because good is always set against you. Understand that? And guess what? Because your family members, they know you. You, they, you grew up around them. They know you. They're always going to try to, uh, to take you back to the things that you know you like, the things that you know you love, in order for you to fulfill the lust of your flesh. But that's why it's important for you to, uh, to be in the midst of the brothers and sisters, to communicate on a daily basis that you don't find yourself in the midst of sin. Because if you don't communicate on a daily basis with the brothers and sisters in the congregation, you are like that sheep that is that is going astray. And Satan is going to find you. Satan will devour. You will destroy. You. Because you are like, you ever seen in, on National Geographic, you see the uh, springbok, the lion is hunting. And there's this one springbok that decides to go off on by, by itself. What happens to it? It gets torn in pieces by the lion. Likewise, spiritually, you're going to be just like that. If you don't want you don't communicate on a daily basis with your brothers and sisters in the congregation. That's why the Most High God says, gather yourself together. There's no scripture that says be an individual like be by yourself. There's no scripture you're going to find in this book that says that. You understand? That's to protect you. That's to help you. That's to make sure that your spirit remains in the Bible. So you don't get torn in pieces by Satan roaming around, seeking whom he may devour. You understand? So go back to Acts 10. Acts chapter 10. Read verse 38 again. Acts chapter 10, verse 38. Read. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power, mm. who went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil, for God was with him. You see that? God was with him. That's Emmanuel. God was with him. So here what we're reading is, is that Christ was going about to heal the Israelites because they were oppressed of the devil. At this point, who was ruling? Rome was ruling. So Christ was healing the people because Rome was oppressing our people. You understand? During this time. So likewise, the spiritual demon Satan is also oppressing us because demonic activity will always be around you when you're keeping God's commandments to entice you to go back into your sin. You understand? Now watch this. Give me that in Ecclesiastes 4 and 1. Ecclesiastes chapter 4, verse 1. However, when you fasting, it says you let the bear, you lose the bands of the sickness, you undo the heavy burden, then you are in the good position to what? To let the oppressed go free. Who's the oppressed? Our people is oppressed. Read that. Ecclesiastes 4 and 1. Ecclesiastes chapter 4, verse 1. Come on. So I returned and considered all the oppressions that are done under the sun. Because you fasted, you understand? You, 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 have, you have lost the band of wickedness. You have undone the heavy burden. Now you return it back to your people to what? To let the oppressed go free. Because that's why it says, as so I return and consider all the oppressions that are done under the sun. Because if you don't lose the band of wickedness, you don't undo the heavy burden, you are not going to be able to consider the oppressions that are done under the sun. Because why? You yourself, you're what? Spiritually, you're still blind. You're not going to be able to let the oppressed go free. Come on. And behold, the tears of such as were oppressed. The tears, the tears of such were as were oppressed. Because as a people, we always cry because we are oppressed. We always cry. You understand? We are always cut out of the tears of such as were oppressed. Give me that in Lamentations 1. Lamentations chapter 1, read verse 2. Watch this. You talk about Jerusalem here. Watch what Jeremiah says. Okay, come on. Lamentations chapter 1, verse 2. Read. She weepeth so in the night, he and her tears 
The she is Jerusalem. Jerusalem is weeping so in the night. Okay, come on. And her tears are on her cheeks. Her tears are on her cheeks. We cry. You understand? That's why it says the tears of such as were oppressed. Read. Among all her lovers, she had none to comfort her. The lovers is making reference to the other nations because we touched upon them. You understand? Is that nobody's comforting Zion. Read. All her friends have dealt treacherously with her. Mm. They have become her enemies. You see that thing? Now the nations, we are, the nations, they are our enemies. You understand? The nations are okay with us being at the bottom. Understand that thing. Read on. Judah is gone into captivity mm. because of affliction. Read. And because of great servitude. Great slavery. Come on. She dwelleth among the heathen. She findeth no rest. Mm. All her persecutors overtook her between the straits. They what? They enslaved us. Right now we are in prison houses in all the nations on the, on the earth. Because why? Because of what? Affliction. Because of what? Because of breaking God's commandments. Come on. Verse 4. Read. The ways of Zion do mourn. Mm -hmm. Because none come to the solemn feasts. Read. All her gates are desolate. No meaning there's no leadership. All her gates are desolate. Read. Her priests sigh. Her virgins are afflicted. Come on. And she is in bitterness. Read. Her adversaries are the chief. Mm. Her enemies prosper. You see that thing? The adversaries are the chief. The adversaries is the other nations, our enemies. It says they are the chief. They are ruling over us. Her enemies prosper. The other nations, they are prospering because they are in captivity. Read. For the Lord has afflicted her for the multitude of her transgressions. Mm. Her children are going into captivity before the enemy. You see that thing? That's why I go back to Ecclesiastes now. Chapter 4, verse 1 again. Ecclesiastes, chapter 4, verse 1. Come on. So I return. And considered all the oppressions that are done under the sun. Read. And behold, the tears of such as were oppressed, mm -hmm. and they had no comforter. And on the side of their oppressors, there was power, Come but on. they had no comforter. You see what it's saying? It says, With the tears of such as were oppressed, because we had no comforter. We had no comforter. So the comfort is what? Give me that in Romans 15, verse 4. This is the comfort. The comfort is going to come from where? The scriptures. Okay. Romans 15 verse, verse 4. Watch this. Romans chapter 15 verse 4. Go ahead. For whatsoever things were written aforetime were written for our land, that we through patience and comfort of the scriptures might have hope. You see that? That we, that we through patience and comfort of the scriptures might have hope. Because what's going to comfort our people is the laws of God. God's commandment is what's going to comfort the black man and the black woman, the Hispanic man and the Native American Indian man. God's laws is what's going to comfort us because we are oppressed. So that's why it says to let the oppressed go free. How are we going to let the oppressed go free? We bring the laws of God to them, the scriptures to them. You understand? We don't bring politics. We don't bring democracy. We don't bring anything else but the laws of God. That's how our people are going to be comforted. You understand? That's how we're going to let the oppressed of our people go free. Spiritually, first and foremost, before the Lord will deliver us physically from the hands of our enemies and these nations that hate and despise. You understand? So go back. Go back to Isaiah 58. Read verse 6 one more again. Isaiah chapter 58 verse 6. Come on. Is not this the first that I have chosen? Mm -hmm. To lose the bands of wickedness, Ray. to undo the heavy burdens, and to let the oppressed go free, Come and on. that ye break every yoke. We must break every yoke of bondage in the minds of our people. You understand? Give me to Deuteronomy 28, verse 48. I'm going to show you that. We must, we must what? We must break the yoke of bondage in the minds of our people. Watch this. Read that for me. Deuteronomy 28, read verse 48. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 48. Come on. Therefore shalt thou serve thine enemies, which the Lord shall send against thee, mm -hmm. in hunger and in thirst, 
and in nakedness and in want of all things. Pray. And he shall put a yoke of iron upon thy neck until he have destroyed thee. You see that thing? So it says, in hunger and in thirst and in nakedness and in want of all things, we're going to have to serve our enemies for the want of all things. It says, our enemies will put yokes of iron upon our neck until we have destroyed them. Until the yokes of iron are no longer necessary. So where would the yokes of iron be? They'll be in our mind. That's why here in Isaiah says, to let the oppressed go free and to break, the, he says, to break every yoke. The yoke of the yokes of bondage which are wet in our mind now. Spiritual bondage. These spiritual yokes in our mind. You understand? These spiritual yoke, watch this. Give me, I'm going to show you that. Give me the book of Jeremiah 6, verse 19. Jeremiah 6, verse 19. Because in the lens of our captivity, our enemies, they even have what they have control over our thought process. The fruit of our thought is dictated by them because why? We broke the commandments of the Most High. Okay, read that. Jeremiah 6, verse 19. Come on. Hear, O earth, behold, I will bring evil upon these people, mm -hmm. even the fruit of their thoughts. You see that? Even the fruit of their thoughts, the evil that the Lord says will bring upon us is the fruit of our thoughts. What is the fruit of our thoughts? The things that come out of our mind and the things that we do. That's the fruit of our thoughts, our actions. He says the fruit of our thoughts is going to be evil also. Go ahead. Because they have not hearkened unto my words, Mm -hmm. Not to my law, but rejected yes. it. But we rejected it. Now because we did not hearken unto the voice of the Lord our God, but we rejected his commandments, now the fruit of our thoughts is evil. Who's detecting that? The enemies that have us enslaved. You understand? The devil that's oppressing us. Understand that? So what he's telling us right there is that, guess what? We're going to have yokes of, yokes of iron in our mind because our enemies will put yokes of iron on our neck until they destroy us, until their yokes of iron are no longer necessary. Then they're going to control the fruit of your thoughts. You understand? Watch this. Give me Revelation 18. I'm going to show you that. Revelation chapter 18. Read verse. You're going to read verse. Read verse 13. Because the nations will come and steal our resources, our, our gold, our platinum, our, our diamonds, and so forth. But here's what else they will take. Read verse 18. I'm going to show you that. Come on. Revelation chapter 18, verse 13. Read. And cinnamon, and odors, and ointments, and frankincense, and wine, and oil, and fine flour, and wheat, and beasts, and sheep, and horses, and chariots, and slaves, and souls of men. You hear that part right there? Because this is going into us, our natural resources. But this part says, and slaves and souls of men. Slaves and souls of men. The slaves goes into what? The, the, when they will physically put chains on our, on our necks and our ankles and on our wrists. Until they've destroyed us. Until they've done what? They've, they've mentally destroyed us. Now the chains will be in our mind. That's why here, then it says, and souls of men. Your mind. They will, they will enslave you physically. When the chains are no longer necessary, your mind will be enslaved now. That's why it's in souls of men. Even the fruit of their thoughts will also be enslaved. You see that thing? So now, when you're fasting, you need to understand it's not just about you. Because a lot of you, you've been fasting, right? But you think it's about you. No, it's not about you, Negro. It's not about you. That's why when you fast, you don't really sit down to examine the stuff that you've done or the things that you're doing or struggling with. That's why you keep going back to it. Because you think that, no, it's not about us. Yes, we are going to benefit from the past, but more importantly, once you get your mind right, you're able to properly see, you properly, you are qualified now to go out there and let the oppressed of your people go free. You men understand that? Yes, sir. That's what this, that's what the really fasting is about. And I want to show you some great examples of our forefathers that when they fasted, yes, they fasted so they can get their minds right. But more importantly, above all, it was about for the it was about the benefit of their nation. 
It wasn't just about them. That's why we have to take fasting very seriously. It's not something to play with. You understand? It's not something to play with. Now watch this. Now let's go back. Go back to Isaiah 58 now. Read verse 6 one more again. Because there's a lot of meat on that bone. So we must take some meat of that bone. So you can understand what the verse is saying. Okay? Isaiah 58. Read verse 6 once, more, once again. Come on. Isaiah chapter 58 verse 6. Read. Is not this the fast that I have chosen? To lose the bands of wickedness. To undo the heavy burdens. Mm -hmm. And to let the oppressed go free. Right. And that ye break every yoke. That ye break every yoke. Every yoke of bondage that is now. Spiritually, we are in bondage. Our people are spiritually in bondage. That's why they need the laws of God. And he's going to bring the laws of God to them. Those of us that our mind has now what the most and now is dealing with us, is showing us how to understand the scriptures. Now we are able to go out there to heal the minds of our people. You understand? We literally fighting for the minds of our people. Understand that thing. You understand? Now watch this. Read verse 7 now. Come on. Is it not to deal thy bread to the hungry? Our job is to deal our bread to the hungry. Okay, come on. And that thou bring the poor that are cast out to thy house. The poor that are cast out of, out to the, out of the house is the name is our people. Our people is the poor that are cast out. Read. When thou seest the naked, that thou cover him, mm. and that thou hide not thyself from thine own flesh. Stop right there. Now read the verse again. We're gonna we gonna break it down so we understand what Isaiah is saying. Come on. Isaiah chapter fifty-eight verse seven. Read. Is it not to deal thy bread to the hungry? Stop right there. It says, "Is it not to deal thy bread to the hungry?" Remember, you will be in a good position to go out there to deal the bread to the hungry. You understand? What is the bread that must be dealt to the hungry? Let's understand. Give me Deuteronomy eight verse three. Let's see what is the bread that we must deal to the hungry. Okay, watch this. Deuteronomy chapter eight, read verse three. Deuteronomy chapter 8, verse 3. Come on. And he humbled thee and suffered thee to hunger mm. and fed thee with manna which thou knewest not. Right. Neither did thy fathers know. Come on. That he might make thee know that man does not live by bread only. That what? That man does not live by bread only. That man does not live by bread only. Remember it says he humbled thee and suffer thee to hunger, and allow you to go hungry, you understand, and fed thee with manna which thou knewest not, neither did thy fathers, that he might make thee know that man does not live by bread only, come on, but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of the Lord does man live. So he's letting you know what the bread is. The bread is the word of God, that is the word of God that man must live by. That's the bread. The bread that must be dealt to the hungry is the word of God. That's what Moses is telling us right there. The bread is the word of God. Understand that. So go back, Isaiah chapter 58, verse 7. Isaiah chapter 58, verse 7. Come on. Is it not to deal thy bread to the hungry? Thy bread to the hungry. Our job is to deal the bread to the hungry, meaning what? To go and teach our people the laws of God because our people are hungry for this truth. That's why they are joining political parties. You understand? They are voting. They are doing, doing because our people are spiritually hungry. Politics is not going to work. It's not going to still quench their thirst. You know, it's not going to satisfy their hunger. It's not going to do that. You understand? Those are broken out. Those are broken systems that cannot hold water. Understand that? Now watch this. Give me Luke chapter six verse twenty. Luke chapter six verse twenty. Okay. Luke chapter 6, verse 20. Read. And he lifted up his eyes on his disciples and said, You know what? Hmm. Start of verse 19. Luke 6, verse 19. Let's see. Let's start there. Come on. Luke chapter 6, verse 19. Mm -hmm. And the whole multitude sought to touch him, for there went virtue out of him and healed them all. He healed them all. They touched him and he just he was able to heal them all. You understand? That's what Christ was doing. Go ahead. Watch this. 
And he lifted up his eyes on his disciples and said, Blessed be ye poor, for yours is the kingdom of God. You see what he's saying? He says, Blessed be ye. Blessed be ye poor, for yours is the kingdom of God. Because we're spiritual what? Poor. Go ahead, watch this. Go ahead. Blessed are ye that hunger now, mm. for ye shall be filled. You see what he's saying? Blessed be ye, blessed are ye that hunger now, for ye shall be filled. Remember, it says, you must go out and deal thy bread to the hungry. Now Christ is saying, blessed are ye that hunger now, for because ye shall be filled. Hmm. Watch this. Go ahead. Blessed are ye that weep now, for ye shall laugh. You see that thing? Blessed are ye that weep now, for ye shall laugh. Why? Because the Lord will, just, will put the, his spirit upon the prophet to go out there to feed our people that are hungry. To feed them with what? The word of the most High like God. Watch this. Let's get some examples. Give me John 21, verse 15. John, the 21st chapter, the 15th verse. Let's read that. John, chapter 21, verse 15. Come on. So when they had dined, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of Jonas, lovest thou me more than these? Hmm. He said unto him, Yea, Lord, thou knowest that I love thee. He said unto him, Feed my lambs. He says, feed my lambs. He says, if you love me, feed my lambs. That's what Christ is telling the apostle Peter. Go ahead. He said to him again the second time, mm -hmm. Simon, son of Jonas, lovest thou me? He said unto him, Yea, Lord, thou knowest that I love thee. He said unto him, feed my sheep. What did he say? Feed my sheep. Feed my sheep. Feed my lamb. You understand? That's the same thing that we just read in Isaiah 68. Is a deal thy bread to the hungry. Feed my sheep. Feed my lamb. The same way we're telling the apostle Peter back then, guess who he's telling? He's telling us. Our job is to feed our people that are hungry for this truth. They are thirsty for this truth. That's our job. You understand? In order for us to do that, we must study. We must apply. We must grow. We must seek counsel. To, under, to get the right understanding of this book. That's why I want you men and women also to study. You are not here to become a professional student. Okay? Now read. Go ahead. He said unto him the third time, Simon, son of Jonas, lovest thou me? Peter was grieved because he said unto him the third time, lovest thou me? And he said unto him, Lord, thou knowest all things. Hmm. Thou knowest that I love thee. Jesus said unto him, feed my sheep. He's saying, he's saying to him the third time, feed my sheep. Meaning what? You are going to be responsible for what? Because Pete, the apostle Peter was the head apostle. You are going to be responsible for doing what? For teaching Israel, the nation, the nation of Israel, the laws of God. You have to feed my lambs. Feed my sheep. Watch this. Give me that in Jeremiah 3.15. Jeremiah. Chapter 3, verse 15. Watch this. Jeremiah 3, 15. That's what we do in this day, in the spirit of the black Messiah, Jesus the Christ. We what you got. Come on. Jeremiah chapter 3, verse 15. Come on. And I will give you pastors according to my heart. You see that thing? He says, I'm going to give you pastors according to my heart. The Lord says, the pastors that I'm going to send to you is because they are coming there according to his heart. Not according to they went to seminary schools or cemetery schools when they learned the doctrine of the dead. No, because that's what Christianity is, the doctrine of the dead. They teach our people, they rock our people to sleep, to stay in sin, to remain in slavery, to remain confused and lost. That's what Christianity is. Christianity is the doctrine of the dead and is the doctrine of death. Read the Bible again, verse 15. Come on. Jeremiah chapter 3 verse 15 mm -hmm. and I will give you pastors according to my heart mm -hmm. we shall feed you with knowledge and understanding you see that thing we shall do what we shall feed you with knowledge and understanding they shall feed you with knowledge and understanding they will have feed you with knowledge and understanding that's why they are Christ said to the apostle Peter feed my sheep feed my lambs what is he going to feed them with? 
knowledge and understanding. What is the knowledge? Let's get that in Malachi 2 verse 7. Let's see what is the knowledge. You understand? This is the knowledge that the, the Christ was talking about when he was talking to the apostle Peter. Read what you got. Come on. Malachi chapter 2 verse 7. Mm -hmm. For the priest sleeps should keep knowledge. Read. And they should seek the law at his mouth. They should what? They should seek the law at his mouth. He says the priest lips should keep knowledge and they should seek the law at his mouth. So at the mouth of the priest, you must find the law. That's the knowledge. Go ahead. For he is the messenger of the Lord of hosts. Because the priest is the messenger of the Lord of hosts. His job is supposed to feed the people with knowledge. What is the knowledge? The laws of God, God's commandments. Okay. He says they shall feed you with knowledge, which is the laws of God and understanding. Watch this. Give me that in Psalm 21 verse 11. Ecclesiastical chapter 21 verse 11. Watch this. Ecclesiastical chapter 21 verse 11. Read. He that keepeth the law of the Lord getteth the understanding thereof. You see that thing? Once you know the knowledge which is the laws of God and the, you, and the pastors which is the teachers, the leaders, they are going to teach you the laws of God which is God's knowledge. Once you receive the law, you're going to get the, you're going to receive understanding. That's why it says a good understanding of all they that do his commandments. That's in Psalms 111 and 10. We're going to get that after this. Keep, come on, read on. And the perfection of the fear of the Lord is wisdom. Once you get understanding, you're going to get wisdom. Because wisdom will teach you why you're not supposed to do this. Wisdom will teach you why you're not supposed to do that. Wisdom will give you the why. The answer to the why questions. You understand? The Lord will teach you what you must do. You understand? Once you receive understanding, you'll understand why you must do it and why you must not do it. That's when you receive wisdom. You understand? Now, give me Psalm 111 and 10. Psalm chapter 111, verse 10. Come on. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Read. A good understanding of all they that do his commandments. Come on. His praise endure it forever. You see that? So when you keep the commandments of the Lord, you will receive a good understanding. That's why it says, what? He that keepeth the law of the Lord geteth the understanding thereof. You see that? It's a cause and effect. If and then. If, then. You understand? It's conditional. Go back to Isaiah 58. Read verse 7 again. Isaiah chapter 58, verse 7. Read. Is it not to deal thy bread to the hungry mm -hmm. and that thou bring the poor that are cast out to thy house. The poor that must be brought into the house that have been cast out is who? Get Isaiah 14, the last verse. Let's see who the poor is. Okay? The poor that are cast out that must be brought back into the house. Read that. Isaiah 14, the last verse. Isaiah chapter 14, verse 32. Come on. What shall one then answer the messengers of the nation that the Lord has founded Zion and mm. the poor of his people shall trust in it? You see that thing? The Lord has founded Zion. Zion is another name for Israel. He says, the Lord has founded Zion and the poor of his people shall trust in it. You understand? We're going to trust upon the Lord. So guess what? The poor is talk about Israel. Because remember, throughout the history, you had Israelites that was rich. They also they they also part of the poor because spiritually they were poor. They were rich, but spiritually they were poor. That's why I give me Matthew now, chapter five, verse three. Matthew five, verse three. When you look and examine people like Joseph of Arimathea, he was a rich man. Nicodemus, he was a rich man, but he was spiritually poor. Okay, now read that. Matthew chapter five, verse three. Mm -hmm. Blessed are the poor in spirit, Read. for them is the kingdom of heaven. You see that? Blessed are the poor in spirit. You understand? Oh, look at people like Bu Petrus Mustafa. He's poor in spirit. You understand? All these millionaires and thousandaires that you know about people, they are poor in spirit. Understand that? They are poor in spirit. 
they need the laws of the most like God to get delivered. You understand? Watch this. Um, let's go back now. Isaiah, because that's where we were. I go back to Isaiah 58. You understand? Isaiah 58, read verse 7 one more again. Isaiah chapter 58, verse 7. Mm -hmm. Is it not to deal thy bread to the hungry and that thou bring the poor that are cast out to thy house? You see, they, remember, this is the responsibility when you fast, this is the responsibility that you have to deal with. Not only are you dealing with your own issues, but guess what? You also must deal with Israel. That's what you need to understand. It's a huge responsibility. You come into the truth, it's not just about you. You have to be that righteous example to your brothers and sisters. That's why it says, is not to deal thy bread to the hungry, and that thou bring the poor that are cast out of thy house. Who's the poor? Israel. We are the poor in sin. We need the laws of God so we can get our minds right. You understand? Read on. When thou seest the naked, that thou cover him. When you see the naked of our people, the Lord says you must cover them. Get that in Exodus 32. Let's understand what it means. When it says, when you see the naked of your people, you must cover them. Read that. Exodus chapter 32 verse 24. When you see the naked, you must cover the naked of your people. Watch this. And that's twofold, by the way. Okay, come on. Exodus chapter 32, verse 24. Read. And I said unto them, Whosoever had any gold, let them break it off. So they gave it me. Then I cast it into the fire, and they came out this cult. This is Aaron speaking, okay? So he made a golden calf. Israel put him under pressure to create a, an idol for them to worship. Go ahead. And when Moses saw that the people were naked. When Moses saw that the people was what? And when Moses saw that the people were naked. When Moses saw that the people were naked, they were not physically naked. Go ahead. For Aaron had made them naked unto their shame among their enemies. Because Aaron made them what? It says because Aaron made have made them naked unto their shame. Meaning what? The shame goes into sin. Because Aaron made them to sin among their enemies. So the nakedness goes into sin. The nakedness is talking about sin. When you see the naked of your people, you cover them. When you see there are people in the midst of sin, our job is to cover them. Give me that in Revelation chapter 3 verse 18. When you see the naked, you must cover them. You understand? So when you say you want to fast, it's a heavy responsibility because it's not just about you overcoming your own personal sins, but it's being able to overcome and help your nation to overcome as well, to heal. Read that. Revelation 3, read verse 18. Revelation chapter 3, verse 18. Come on. I counsel thee to buy of me gold tried in the fire. The Bible is the gold that is tried in the fire. Read. That thou mayest be rich. Mm -hmm and white raiment, that thou mayest be clothed. Come on. And that the shame of thy nakedness do not appear. You see that thing? That the shame of your nakedness does not appear. That the sin that you are in does not appear. Because why? This white raiment that you're going to be clothed with is the laws of God. The gold tried in the fire. The Bible is how you're going to be covered in your nakedness. Because when the laws of God is read to you, you are going to repent. That's when you get covered. You understand? You're no longer in the midst of sin. That's what that's what is talking, that's what Christ is teaching us here. You understand? Get that in Psalms 132, verse 9. Psalms chapter 132, verse 9. Mm -hmm. Let thy priests be clothed with righteousness, and let thy saints shout for joy. You see what it says? It says, Let thy priests be clothed with righteousness. You understand? That's why it says, when they are seeing the naked, that thou cover them. That's how. How do we cover them? We clothe them with righteousness. What is righteousness? Let's get there. Okay. Deuteronomy 6, verse 25. Deuteronomy, chapter 6, verse 25. Read. And it shall be our righteousness if we observe to do all these commandments before the Lord our God as he has commanded us. You see that thing? So when it says, let thy priest go back to Psalms 132 verse 9 now. So we understand what it means to be clothed with righteousness. Come on. Psalm chapter 132 verse 9. Mm -hmm. 
Let thy priests be clothed with righteousness, and let thy saints shout for joy. You see that thing? So the priests will be clothed with righteousness. You are covered with the laws of God, so that your, the shame of your nakedness does not appear. You see that thing? So go back to where was that now? Isaiah 58. Read verse 7 one more time. Isaiah chapter 58, verse 7. Mm -hmm. Is it not to deal thy bread to the hungry? Come on. And that thou bring the poor that are cast out to thy house? Really? When thou seest the naked. When you see the, the sin, the sinful of our people, when you see our people in the midst of sin, our job is to cover them. With what? With righteousness. We must clothe them with righteousness that the shame of their nakedness does not appear. You understand? Go ahead. And that thou hide not thyself from thine own flesh. That don't hide yourself from your own people. Where must you go? You go to the seat. You go to the seat corners to teach your people the laws of God. Give me that in Ezekiel 3. Ezekiel chapter 3. We're going to start at verse 4. Okay. Ezekiel chapter 3 and verse 4. Watch this. Ezekiel chapter 3 verse 4. Mm -hmm. And he said unto me, Son of man, go get thee unto the house of Israel and speak with my words unto them. You see what he's saying? He says, go get thee to unto the house of Israel and speak my words unto them. So he's saying, go to the children, go to, go to where Israel is. That's why we go to different places in the country to teach our people the laws of God. Israel, that's where Israel is. Shabbil, that's where Israel is. We're going there as an example. Okay, come on. For thou art not sent to a people of a strange speech. You are not sent to a people of a strange speech. The Lord didn't wake us up to go and teach the Chinese. He didn't wake us up to go and teach white people. He didn't wake us up to go and teach the Arabs. No, he says, what? Read that part again. For thou art not sent to a people of a strange speech. Mm -hmm. And of a hard language. Read. Really? But to the house of Israel. You see that? But to the house of Israel. Remember. The house of Israel has been cast out. We are in captivity. We are oppressed. You understand? We are depressed. So now the Lord says, I'm going to send you to the house of Israel and you're going to speak my words unto them. You understand? Go ahead. Yeah, that's it on that. That's it on that. That's why I said, don't hide yourself from your own people. That's what he's talking about right there. But watch this. Now I'm going to show you something, right? Because the, what we just read in Isaiah is a heavy responsibility. It's not just you fasting for yourself. It's about you, you saying, I want more responsibility to work, to be a righteous example to my nation, so I can go and deal the bread to the hand and cover the naked of my people, so that the shame of their nakedness does not appear, that the nation, they speak evil of us. That's a heavy responsibility, and that's a great honor. You understand? So when you say you want to fast, it's not just talking about you, you, the brothers only, but the sisters as well. Because your example is by your conduct, your behavior, how you speak now when you're out there. You don't, you're not loud like you used to. You're not all up in a man's face. You understand? You have etiquette. You know how to speak. You know how to conduct yourself. So on and so forth. You no longer hang out with that evil crew that you used to hang with, that they always talk about boyfriends and all that. Now you've got sense. You start to choose the people you associate yourself with. You understand? You start to be mindful of the company you keep. That's what it means. That's the righteous example. Your speech must change. Your, the way you dress must change. What you eat must change. So on and so forth. It's called repentance. You understand? Watch this. I'm going to give an example of our forefathers that when they fasted, it wasn't just about themselves. I'm going to give you an example. Give me Exodus. Give me Exodus 34, verse 27. This is our forefather Moses. Okay? Exodus 34, verse 27. Let's read that. Exodus chapter 34, verse 27. Read. Really? And the Lord said unto Moses, Write thou these words, for after the tenor of these words, I have made a covenant with thee and with Israel. You see what he's saying? He says, After the tenor of these words, I have made a covenant with you and with the 12 tribes of Israel. Because Moses was a mediator, you understand, of the old covenant. Come on. 
and he was there with the Lord 40 days and 40 nights. Mm. He did neither eat bread nor drink water. Mm. And he wrote upon the tables the words of the covenant, the Ten Commandments. You see that thing? He was there with the Lord. He was fasting for 40 days and 40 nights. You understand? He received the lively oracles to give unto us. Watch this. Go ahead. And it came to pass, when Moses came down from Mount Sinai with the two tables of testimony in Moses' hand, when he came down from the mount, that Moses was not that the skin of his face shone while he talked with him. He didn't know that he was, he was what? He was glowing while he came down to talk to the people. His face, his face was shining. You understand? Go ahead. Come on. And when Aaron and all the children of Israel saw Moses, behold, the skin of his face shone, and they were afraid to come nigh him. He was what? He says the face of the, 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 his face was shining, and the people was afraid to come close to him. Hold this. Give me Ecclesiastes 8 and 1. Watch this. Ecclesiastes. Why was the face, why was his face shining like that? What was the reason behind it? Let's see. Read it. Ecclesiastes chapter 8, verse 1. Come on. Who is as the wise man? Mm. And who knoweth the interpretation of a thing? Stop right there. It says, who is as the wise man? And who knows the interpretation of this thing? Remember, this thing right here is talking about what we, what, mm. okay, keep reading. I'm going to explain it real quick. Go ahead. A man's wisdom maketh his face to shine. You see that part right there? A man's wisdom maketh his face to shine. That's why Moses' face was shining because he had wisdom. He was fasting. The Lord was teaching him. The Lord revealed unto him many things for those 40 days and 40 nights. Read on. And the boldness of his face shall be changed. And the boldness of his face shall be changed. Meaning what? He's not going to look like the Moses they used to know. You understand? The same way when you brothers and sisters come into this truth, your spirit changes. You're no longer the sister they used to know. You're no longer the brother they used to know. Now you are changing, you understand? And when the people look at you, they start to look at you sideways. You know, you're not the same anymore. You're not the same. You no longer behave like that. You no longer behave that way. You know why? You obey the gospel. Understand that? Give me that in 2 Samuel 10, verse 6, real quick. No, 1 Samuel, 1 Samuel. 1 Samuel 10, read verse 6. Watch this. First Samuel chapter 10, verse 6. Mm -hmm. And the spirit of the Lord will come upon thee, mm. and thou shalt prophesy with them, really? and shall be turned into another man. You see that thing? When the spirit of the Lord jumps on you, you obey, you humble down, you hearken unto the voice of the Lord. Your God, it says what? You are going to be turned into another man. A new man, a new woman that nobody recognizes. Or how? These days when you've got a beard on your face, you've got fringes, why is that on your shirt? Hmm? You don't celebrate birthdays no more. You don't celebrate Mother's Day, Father's Day. People are going to get mad. You don't say happy birthday no more. Not to hell with that. I don't do that stuff no more. You understand? And your spirit is changing. That's what happens when you become born again for real, according to the Holy Bible. Go back to Exodus 34 now. Exodus 34, um, read, read verse 30 again. Exodus chapter 34, verse 30. Read. And when Aaron and all the children of Israel saw Moses, behold, the skin of his face shone, and they were afraid to come nigh him. His face was shining because he had wisdom. A, man, a man's wisdom maketh his face to shine. Go ahead. And Moses called unto them, and Aaron and all the rulers of the congregation returned unto him, and Moses talked with them. Moses talked to the people who was talking to our forefathers. Go ahead. And afterward, all the children of Israel came nigh, and he gave them in commandment all that the Lord had spoken with him in Mount Sinai. You see what? You see the reason why Moses was, what he, he, he fasted, he was with the Lord 40 days and 40 nights is so that he can be able to deliver the laws of God to his people. You understand? To deal the bread to the hungry, to let the oppressed go free. You understand that? 
to cover the naked. That's why he did this. It wasn't just for himself. No. It was for what? For the benefit of the 12 tribes of Israel. So when you come into this truth, you keep the laws of God. You say, I want to fast. I want to get my mind right. I want to cleanse my spirit and all that. It's not just about you. It's not about you. That's an, this is a perfect example here. You understand? I'm going to get another example. Give me Numbers 14 verse 11. Watch this. And part of the reason why you fast, you study, you fast, you pray, you apply the laws of God. Guess what? Guess you become a what? You become a mediator between you and the law. Between if you become a mediator between the Most High God and the people. And as part of that, when you get your mind right, you lead your nation righteously according to the Scripture. Guess what? You actually also helping your nation. You preventing. You are basically pacifying the the, the wrath of the law. You understand? You pass by your righteous work, you pacifying the rest of the law that it does not come upon your nation. I'm gonna give an example. Numbers 14, verse 11. Watch this. Come on. Numbers chapter 14, verse 11. Read. Right? And the Lord said unto Moses, How long will these people provoke me? And how long will it be ere they believe me? For mm. all the signs which I have showed among them. For all the, the see, because guess what? Our our forefathers were murmuring and complaining. Remember the chapter before it, the most high God used Moses to send to send 12 spies to go and survey the land, to bring back a, a, a report or what did they find? The land, the people, the 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 fatness of the land, and so on and so forth, whether they are pure, whether they be rich, things of that nature, so that they can what and come back and understand the type of land we're dealing with the type of people we're going to conquer, so on and so forth. So what's happening here is the people are complaining, they are thinking about Egypt now. Because now responsibility has come upon them for them to be able now to stand on their own two feet. So they are complaining. You understand? And the most high God is mad. Because the Lord showed us why, he showed us signs and wonders when he parted the Red Sea. We went over that yesterday during the Q&A, right? Watch this. Jump down, jump down to verse, uh, read verse 11 again. Let me catch my breath. Let me catch my thought. Here. Read verse 11 again from Numbers chapter 14, verse 11. And the Lord said unto Moses, How long will these people provoke me? Hmm. And how long will it be ere they believe me? For all the signs which I have showed among them, for all the, the signs which I've shown among them, right? Jump down to this 21. Watch this. The Lord is going into the signs that he showed for us. When we were what? When the signs that goes into the place that he prayed the Egyptians with, we parted the Red Sea, we went across on dry land, and the Egyptians drowned. You understand? The Lord is saying, after everything that I've showed them, they're still acting a fool. They're still demonic. Read verse 21. Watch this. Numbers chapter 14, verse 21. Mm-hmm. But as truly as I live, all the earth shall be filled with the glory of the Lord. Go ahead. Because all those men which have seen my glory and my miracles, mm. which I did in Egypt and in the wilderness, and have tempted me now these ten times, and have not hearkened to my voice. You see what he's saying? The Lord is, is making it plain when he says, and he says, for all the signs which I've showed among them, that's verse 11. Verse 22, he is explaining to us when this happened. He says, and my miracles which I did in Egypt, that's the plague, and in the wilderness, when he parted the Red Sea, and when he, he brought manna unto us, he fed us with the quail, the flesh of the quails and all that. He says, guess what? We're still provoking him because we don't want to humble down to what he's saying. We don't? Surely they shall not see the land which I swear unto their fathers. Neither shall any of them that provoke me see it. You see what the Lord is saying? He says, this first generation, they're not going to enter in. Jump back up to verse 11 now. We're going to read down. Okay? I'm going to show you that the most High God was man. And this is what he's telling Moses he wants to do to the rebellious Israelites. Now read. Come on. Numbers chapter 14, verse 11. Mm -hmm. And the Lord said unto Moses, How long will these people provoke me? And how long will it be ere they believe me 
for all the signs which I have shown among them. Come on. I will smite them with the pestilence. Stop right there. You know when I was reading this, you know, I was like, you know, the Most High has a very dear sense of truth. He's telling Moses, to listen, this Negro, I'm going to kill them. He says, listen, they don't want to believe me after everything I've done and showed them. He said, what do you think? He says, I'm going to smite them with the pestilence. It's like he's telling, he's, he's talking about something small. <laughs> he says, listen, I will smite them with the pestilence. I'm going to kill them with the disease. You see this thing? You know, when I read this, I was like, you know, I paused for a second. I'm like, the most I, the way he's speaking about this thing, that the most I is the is the OG. He's the original gangster. Hmm? Listen, he says, listen, I'm gonna smite them with the pestilence. Watch this. <laughs> you see that thing? That's why, listen, we need to hear the most high God. The most high God don't play. He don't play games. He says, I'm gonna smite them with the pestilence. They are murmuring and complaining. You understand? Read it again, verse 12. Come on. Numbers chapter 14, verse 12. Read. I will smite them with the pestilence mm. and disinherit them. I will listen. I will disinherit them and I'm going to start old. Go ahead. And will make of thee a greater nation and mightier than they. You see what he's saying? Is that listen, I'm going to start over with you, Moses. I'm going to kill them all. I'm going to start over. Watch what Moses says now. Go ahead. And Moses said unto the Lord, mm -hmm. Then the Egyptians shall hear it. He says, Listen. Then Moses said unto the Lord, Then the Egyptians shall hear this thing, that you're going to destroy them all with the pestilence and disinherit them. Go ahead. For thou brought up these people in thy might from among them. You see what he's saying? He says, that If you say this, the Egyptians are going to hear of it. And guess what? They are going to now speak about it. They say, listen, you brought them out. Now you are killing them. You understand? Meaning what? You bring back on your way. Next verse. Go ahead. And they will tell it to the inhabitants of this land. Mm -hmm. For they have heard that thou, Lord, art among these people. Read. That thou, Lord, art seen face to face, and that thy cloud standeth over them, and that thou goest before them by daytime in a pillar of a cloud, and in a pillar of fire by night. You see what he's saying? So it says, if you do this, the people now are going to be speaking about it and say, listen, um, you see what you've done now? You see what their Lord says you're going to deliver them. Now he's killing them. Read the next verse. Go ahead. Meaning what? The most High God is going back on his way. You see that thing? Go ahead. Now if thou shalt kill all these people as one man, then the nations which have heard the fame of thee will speak, saying, mm. Because the Lord was not able to bring these people into the land which he swore unto them. Therefore, he had slain them in the wilderness. You see that? So now, what is Moses doing? Moses is pacifying the rest of the law. That's why Moses loved the people. So think about it. If it was you who was in Moses' seat, and you ask there, the Lord is saying, listen, Step aside, I'm going to kill them all. I'm going to start over with you. A wicked Negro will say, yes, Lord, do. <laughs> hmm. Yeah, think about it. Think about think about you today. The Lord would have asked you. What would you say? You want to pacify the Lord there? Or you want to say, kill them all? Think about that thing. That's why he says, yeah, he loved the people. God, give me that in Deuteronomy 33. You told me chapter 30, 33, okay? You told me 33, read verse 3, 4. Okay, watch this. Deuteronomy chapter 33, verse 3. Mm -hmm. Yea, he loved the people. You see that? Moses, Moses loved the people, come on. All his saints are in thy hand. The Moses' hand, read. And they sat down at thy feet. Mm -hmm. everyone shall receive of thy words. Meaning what? They're going to receive the word of God. I mean, the Mo Moses loved the people so much that when the Lord says do this, he did it. He fasted 40 days and 40 nights. He received the lively oracle. He delivered them unto us. That is love for the people. You understand? He loved the people that much. Understand that thing. Now watch this. Give me the book of Sirach 48 verse 10. Ecclesiastes chapter 48 
verse 10. I'm going to show you really. Our forefathers, men, they were heavy. They were heavy. Our forefathers were heavy. Mark 48, verse 10. Because what we just read in Numbers 14, Moses specified the wrath of the Lord's anger when the Lord was about to tear Negroes behind. Read what you got. Mark 48, verse 10. Come on. Ecclesiastes chapter 48, verse 10. Hmm. Who was ordained for reproofs in their times? Meaning the prophets. The prophets were ordained for correction in their times. Wait. To pacify the wrath of the Lord's judgment. You see that? That's what Moses did. He pacified the wrath of the Lord's judgment upon the people. Come on. Before it break forth into fury. Hmm. And to turn the heart of the father unto the son. Wait. And to restore the tribes of Jacob. You see that thing? That's what Moses did. He did that thing because he loved the people. Go ahead. Blessed are they that saw thee and slept in love, for we shall surely live. Because of what? Keeping of the commandments, because the prophets, they put their lives on the line for the love of the people. That's what we do in this day, brothers. Understand that thing. Now watch this. Give me the book of 2 Ezra, chapter 5, verse 13. Here's another forefather that did the same thing for us. Okay? Second Ezra 5, read verse 13. Second Ezra chapter 5, verse 13. Read. To show thee such tokens I have lived. And if thou would pray again and weep as now and fast seven days, thou shalt hear yet greater things. So the thing what you need to notice about our forefather Ezra, he fasted often as the Lord commanded him, but it wasn't for himself. He fasted so he can understand things and be able to declare those things that he understood that was revealed at him for the 12 tribes of Israel. That's what you need to understand. That's the spirit our forefather Ezra had. Same spirit that Moses was moving in. Go ahead. Second Ezra chapter 5 verse 14. Then I awaked, and an extreme fearfulness went through all my body, and my mind was troubled so that it fainted. Read. So the angel that was come to talk with me held me, comforted me and set me up upon my feet. Now the angel is comforting Ezra. If you stand up upon my feet, I'm going to explain this stuff to you, but I'm going to tell you what you need to do. Go ahead. And in the second night it came to pass that Selathiel, the captain of the people, came unto me, saying, Where hast thou been? And why is thy countenance so heavy? Because guess what? Because Ezra is dealing with the Lord at this point. The Lord is going to reveal unto him certain things. But the Lord requires Ezra to do certain things first before he can receive this understanding. That's why the statement says, to show, thee, to show thee such tokens I have lived. And if thou wilt pray again and weep as now and fast seven days, thou shalt hear yet greater things. You see that? Go ahead. Knowest thou not that Israel is committed unto thee in the land of their captivity? This is Salatiel now. Salatiel is speaking to Ezra. Because it says, do you not know that Israel is committed unto you in the land of their captivity? Go ahead. Up then and eat bread mm -hmm. and forsake us not. Right. As the shepherd that leaveth his flock in the hands of cruel wolves. Listen to what he, listen to what Ezra says now. Come on. Then said I unto him, go thy ways from me and come not nigh me. And he heard what I said and went from me. Now, Ezra said to Salatiel, he says, go your way, come, don't come close to me. And, he had, and Salatiel heard what Ezra says, and he went from him. Read on. And so I fasted seven days, mourning and weeping, like as Uriel the angel commanded me. So now, because Ezra was on a mission, there's a task that the Lord commanded him to do. That's why I told the captain, he said, listen, I'll deal with you later on. There's something I got to deal with. Go ahead. And after seven days, so it was, that the thoughts of my heart were very grievous unto me again. Read. And my soul recovered the spirit of understanding. It says, and after seven days, so it was. So he fasted seven days, that the thought is that, that the thoughts of my heart were very grievous unto me again. Go ahead. And what? And my soul recovered the spirit of understanding. You see that thing? He says, his soul recovered the spirit of understanding. So when you come, when you're coming into this truth, you are, when you fast, you pray, you apply the scriptures, 
You want your soul to recover the spirit of understanding because we had lost them. Now we're coming into this truth. We are recovering it. That's why it says the Holy Ghost, which the Father shall send in my name, will bring you all things and bring all things to your remembrance. Will teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance whatsoever I have said unto you. That's what we're reading here. Go ahead. And my soul recovered the spirit of understanding, and I began hmm. to talk with the Most High again. Says, then I began to talk with the Most High again. For, for the benefit of his people. Because when he reads down, the Lord is revealing one. The Lord now reveals more understanding to Ezra. You understand? So he did it not for himself, but for Ezra. Understand that thing. Give me 2 Ezra 6, verse 31. 2 Ezra, chapter 6, verse 31. Watch this. 2 Ezra, chapter 6, verse 31. Watch this. Read. If thou would pray yet more, and fast seven days again, hmm. I shall tell thee greater things by day than I have heard. You see what he's saying? This, the, this is Uriel now, the angel. He said, listen, if you go again for seven days, I'm going to tell you greater things, you understand, by day than I have heard. The Negro will say this day, you know what? I want to do that. Not because you're doing it for your nation, but you just want to sound deep. Read the verse again, verse 31. Second Ezra chapter 6, verse 31. Go ahead. If thou would pray yet more and fast seven days again, I shall tell thee greater things by day than I have heard. Read. For thy voice is heard before the Most High. Mm. For the mighty had seen thy righteous dealing. Stop right there. You see that part right there says, For thy voice is heard before the Most High. Because when you fast, you afflict your soul and you are sincere in doing it. You follow the steps that we went over. Don't think that you have to jump the steps, then you get to this. No. You must set your house in order. Lose the bands of wickedness. You understand? Those are the first steps. Until you can get to this place, these are those are the first steps. Then you get to this place. Read verse 32 again. Second Ezra chapter 6, verse 82. Go ahead. For thy voice is heard before the Most High, mm. for the mighty had seen thy righteous dealing. Go ahead. He had seen also thy chastity. Thy chastity which, meaning thy discipline. Come on. Which thou hast heard ever since thy youth. The discipline that you have heard ever since your youth. Go ahead. And therefore, has he sent me to show thee all these things and to say unto thee, be of good comfort and fear not. Mm. Come on. And hasten not with the times that are past to think vain things that thou mayest not hasten from the latter times. So he's telling us and saying, listen, don't haste, don't make haste. You understand? He says, hasten not with the times that are past. He says, don't. Don't, don't be too, don't worry about the things that are past to think vain things. Don't think upon vain things regarding the past. That thou may not hasten from the latter times. You understand? That you may not hasten from the latter, meaning what? You are unable to see what's going to happen in these last days. Go ahead. And it came to pass after this that I wept again and fasted seven days in like manner. Mm. That I might fulfill the three weeks which he told me. So we see what Ezra was doing. He was fasting week one, again, week two, week three. You understand? That's what he was doing. Go ahead. And in the eighth night was my heart vexed within me again. Mm. And I began to speak before the Most High. You see that? So the eighth night, he says, then guess what? He began to speak to the Lord. Go ahead. For my spirit was greatly set on fire, hmm. and my soul was in distress. His spirit was set on fire, you understand? It says, and my soul was in distress. Because of what? Because of the things that the Lord is revealing unto this man, for Israel's sake. Read on. And I said, O Lord, thou spakest from the beginning of the creation. Now, now we're going to get a glimpse of, now we are able to read about this. Because what did Ezra do? He fasted. That's why we are able to get more details of what we're reading about in Genesis. These are the details here. 
because of what Ezra's, what he fasted. That's why we are able to receive these details that we have. Read that thing again, verse 38. Come on. Second Ezra, chapter 6, verse 38. Read. And I said, O Lord, thou spakest from the beginning of the creation, mm. even the first day, and said as thus, let heaven and earth be made, and thy word was a perfect work. You see that? This is now the beginning, the first day of creation. He says his word was a perfect work. Come on. And then was the spirit, and darkness and silence were on every side. Mm. The sound of man's voice was not yet formed. Come on. Then commandest thou a fair light to come forth of thy treasures, that thy work might appear. That his work may appear. That's why it says, then, thou, then commandest thou a fair light to come forth of thy treasures, that thy work might appear. Because remember, when you read Genesis, right? I'm going to show you something this day. Watch this. Get Genesis 1 and 5. Genesis chapter 1, verse 5. Where? Really? And God called it the light day, mm. and the darkness he called night. Where? Really? And the evening and the morning were the first day. You notice something here? You notice something odd? It says, God, it says God called the light day. And the darkness he called night, and the evening and the morning were the first day. So think about it. Because here, because you like we 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 teach on the seat, because some of you you say it, but I don't think you think about it. You understand when it says the day begins when at evening, right? Yes. Yes, sir. The day, a new day begins at evening. So, so so because somebody might say, wait a minute. But the sun was created on the fourth day. This is what this is the first day. You see that? Yes, sir. The sun was created what day? The fourth day of creation. The greater light to rule the day. So the day is not necessarily dictated by the sun. It wasn't dictated by the sun, but it was dictated by the fair light that we're reading about here in second Ezra. Anybody see that? Yes, sir. Uh -huh. Oh, please. So that's why Ezra, he fasted, we can get these details. Now go back to 2nd Ezra, chapter 6. 2nd Ezra 6, read verse 40 again. 2nd Ezra, chapter 6, verse 40. Read. Then commandest thou a fair light to come forth of thy treasures, mm. that thy work might appear. You see that? I will, I will, I'm showing you to give an example that our forefathers, when they fasted on all this, it wasn't just for themselves. It was for the benefit of the 12 tribes of Israel. Now watch this. Give me Matthew 4, verse 1. You know, no, give me Luke 4. Luke chapter 4, verse 1. Watch this. Luke chapter 4 and verse 1. Watch this. Luke chapter 4, verse 1. Come on. And Jesus, being full of the Holy Ghost, returned from Jordan and was led by the Spirit into the wilderness. Mm -hmm. Being 40 days tempted of the devil, and in those days he did eat nothing. And when they were ended, he afterward hungered. So Christ was fasting. He was afflicting his soul. He was fasting. Was he doing this for himself? No. He was doing this for the 12 tribes of Israel because of the greatest challenge, the greatest challenge that he was going to embark on to die for the 12 tribes of the nation of Israel. This was a big deal. Don't get it twisted. This was a big deal. This is not a small thing that Christ did. A big deal. That's why the angels had to come down for this thing. It was a big deal. Understand that thing. Watch this. Now, hmm. keep going. And the devil said unto him, If thou be the son of God, command the stone that it be made bread. And Jesus answered him, saying, It is written, that man shall not live by prayer alone, but by every word of God. So what we just read, what we're reading here is what we read earlier in Deuteronomy 8, verse 3. I know some of you forgot already. Now, what's happening here is Satan shows up when you are at your lowest. Because that's what Christ was doing here. He was afflicting his soul. He was fasting, preparing for what? Preparing for the things that were written at four time by the prophets. What he would do for the benefit of the 12 tribes of the nation of Israel. You understand? Watch this. 
give me give me the book because guess what what we reading here jump down to verse 18 because what satan was doing satan was tempting him while he was on a fast read verse 18 okay come on luke chapter 4 verse 18 right and when the devil had ended all the temptation he departed from him for a season you see that thing the devil departed from him for a season so when you are fasting guess what when you're going through your trials the devil will depart from you for a season but he's going to return that's the point you understand watch this give me matthew 4 verse 1. matthew chapter 4 verse 1. matthew chapter 4 verse 1. go ahead then was jesus led up of the spirit into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil you see that to be tempted of the devil to be tempted of the devil so the devil went down there went up there to tempt christ while he was on a fast you understand hold that give me hebrews 2. okay hebrews 2 um read verse 16. we're gonna read down hebrews chapter 2 verse 16. Mm -hmm. for verily he took not on him the nature of angels go ahead but he took on him the seed of Abraham. He took on him the seed of Abraham because Christ was born like you and me through sexual intercourse. Go ahead. Wherefore, in all things, it behoved him to be made like unto his brethren. To be made that, like, to be made like unto his brethren. How is he his brethren made? Through men and women laying together. Go ahead. That he might be a merciful and faithful high priest in things pertaining to God, mm -hmm. to make reconciliation for the sins of the people. You see that thing? So that's why it says, it, was, it, says, it behooved him to be made like unto his brethren. Meaning we saw it suitable or right to make it like him, like to, to be made like us, that he might be a merciful and faithful high priest in things pertaining to God. Because if he was not made like us, he was not going to be a merciful and a faithful high priest like that. He was not going to understand the things that we deal with on a daily basis. He was not going to understand temptation. Go ahead. For in that he himself had suffered being tempted. You see that thing? Because he himself, he suffered being tempted. Christ was tempted. The, the, the temptations that we go through on a daily basis, Christ experienced all of them. Understand that? The temptations that we deal with on a daily basis every day, Christ dealt with all of those temptations. Everybody understand that? Yes, sir. The temptations that we deal with on a daily basis, you understand? Fornication, uncleanness, all of these things, he dealt with all these temptations. Yes. Understand that? So you must not have this mindset to say, yeah, listen, Christ does not understand what I'm going through lie impossible because they are letting you know right there verse 18 read verse 18 again hebrews chapter 2 verse 18 mm -hmm. for in that he himself had suffered being tempted he is able to succor them that are tempted he is able to comfort them succor means comfort he is able to comfort them that are tempted so christ is able to comfort us because why because christ did it he did no sin he also he was he suffered temptation, but he didn't want he didn't he didn't um give in to the temptations that he suffered. You understand? That's the point. So now give me Matthew 26, verse 1. Matthew 26, verse 1. Because Christ, 40 days and 40 nights, he fasted as well. You understand? Go back to Matthew 4, read verse 1 and 2 again. Matthew 4, verse 1 and 2. Matthew chapter 4, verse 1. Mm -hmm. Then was Jesus led up of the spirit into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil. That's what we read in Hebrews 2, verse 16 to 18. Come on. And when he had fasted 40 days and 40 nights, he was afterward in hunger. Because guess what? He was feeding his spirit with the word of God, preparing for the greatest endeavor, undertaking that he would ever do. You understand? For his people, because he loved the people. Watch this. Now give me Matthew 26, verse 1. Matthew chapter 26, verse 1. Go ahead. 
And it came to pass, when Jesus had finished all these sayings, he said unto his disciples, Go ahead. Ye know that after two days is the feast of the Passover, and the Son of Man is betrayed to be crucified. And the Son of Man is betrayed to be crucified. Jump down to verse 37. Verse 37. And he took with him Peter and the two sons of Zebedee and began to be sorrowful and very heavy. The two sons of Zebedee, that's James and John. The two sons of Zebedee. They, they took the apostle Peter, James and John, and began to be sorrowful and very heavy. Because what? He was about to do something. He was about to do a heavy thing for his nation. That's why he says he was to be careful. He, 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 he began to be sorrowful and very heavy. Because guess what? He was a man. You understand? He was a man. He also got into what he got into his feelings at this point. Because you, you wouldn't be scared of doing something like this. Hmm. Of course, fear will jump on you. Now you're thinking, oh, I have to go through this. You understand? Keep going. Then said he unto them, my soul is exceeding sorrowful, even mm. unto death. You see what he's telling them? My soul is exceeding sorrowful, even unto death. I'm scared. That's what he's saying. Go ahead. Tarry ye here and watch with me. He says, wait here and watch with me. Go ahead. And he went a little further and fell on his face and prayed, saying, mm. Oh, my father, if it be possible, let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, not as I will, but as thou wilt. Now he got himself right. He says, what? Oh, my father, if it be possible, let this cup pass from me. Meaning what? Listen, I don't want to do this. That's what he's saying. I don't want to do it. Let this cup, let, I don't want to have to do this. But then he got himself right. He says, nevertheless, not as I will, but as thou will. Because what? The mission is a goal. The things must, that are written, they must be fulfilled. Go ahead. And he cometh unto the disciples and findeth them asleep and saith unto Peter, what? Could ye not watch with me one hour? You couldn't watch with me one hour, Peter. Go ahead. Watch and pray that ye enter not into temptation. Mm. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. You see what he's saying? He says, watch and pray that ye enter not into temptation. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. Because why? He's a man. He's about to do this great thing painful thing, and he saw everything that was going to happen to him. Could you imagine that? Yeah. That's why he had to fast 40 days and 40 nights to prepare his spirit for this thing. To prepare his spirit for this great undertaking. That's not a small thing. Go ahead. And he came and found them asleep again, for their eyes were heavy. Mm. And he Go left ahead. them and went away again and prayed the third time, saying the same words. Wait. Right. Then cometh he to his disciples and said unto them, Sleep on now and take your rest. Mm. Behold, the hour is at hand, and the Son of Man is betrayed into the hands of sinners. You see what he's saying? He says, Listen, the hour has come. The hour is at hand, and the Son of Man is betrayed into the hands of sinners. Meaning what? My time has come that I what? That I should die. That I'm going to be killed. I'm going to be put to death. This is some heavy stuff, man. This is some heavy stuff. When you read stuff like this, you're supposed to really sit down and just ponder on this thing and get your mind right. You understand? Watch this. I think it's in Luke. Let me look at it. Hmm. Yes. Give me Luke 22. Luke 22 and read verse 40. What's this? Luke chapter 22, verse 40. Come on. And when he was at the place, he said unto them, He said unto them, the disciples now, Peter, James, and John, come on. Pray that ye enter not into temptation. Go ahead. And he was withdrawn from them about a stone's cast mm -hmm. and kneeled down and prayed. About a stone's cast, meaning you throw a stone, 
that was the distance that somebody would throw a stone. That's how he was, how far he was from them. About the distance of a stone cut. Go ahead. Say, Father, if thou wilt be willing, remove this cup from me. Nevertheless, not my will, but thine be done. But thy will be done. He's going into the same, the same thing we read in Matthew. Watch this. Go ahead. And there appeared an angel unto him from heaven, strengthening him. You see that thing? That's what you don't read about that in Matthew. But you're reading about it in Luke. The angel had to come down to what? To strengthen him, to comfort him. To say, listen, it's going to be all right. You're going to be fine. Don't be scared. Don't be afraid. The most High God has to send down an angel to come down and comfort him. Because this was not a small task. So don't never take what the Lord did for granted. You understand? Go ahead. And being in an agony, he prayed more earnestly. Mm. And his sweat was as it were great drops of blood falling down to the ground. You, oh my God, man. Look at, let, read that thing again, verse 44. Oh. Luke chapter 22, verse 44. And being in an agony, he prayed more earnestly. And his sweat was as it were great drops of blood falling down to the ground. Because that, because what? He was frightened. That's why the angel had to come down and come to him. He was sweating. You understand? Because of what he was about to do. Keep going. Go ahead. And when he rose up from prayer and was come to his disciples, he found them sleeping for sorrow. You see that thing? Go ahead. Come on. And said unto them, Why sleep ye? Rise and pray, lest ye enter into temptation. He says, rise and pray, lest he enter into temptation. Because guess what he had to do? He had to prepare for the temptation. That's why he keeps saying it. He says, rise ye and pray, lest he enter into temptation. Because why? Because the, the, the flesh will tell you, no, don't do this. You're not going to succeed. Don't do it. That's the flesh. But the spirit is like, I'm doing this. That's why he had to discipline and prepare for this great temptation, this great trial that he was going to go through. Why am I going over this? I'm going over this for you to understand that when you fast, you must understand that you're preparing for a trial. And you overcoming that trial, not, giving, not entering into the temptation of the trial, meaning not giving in, guess what? That's going to be for the benefit of your nation. Understand that. And that's what Christ did. That's why today we are alive this day. You understand? In the, under the grace of our Lord to get our mind. That's why we cannot play when it comes to this. We cannot play games. You understand? We cannot play games with not nobody in this, in this camp. There's no time to play. In within and without, we don't play when it comes to this. Because we understand what the Lord did for us. And what he went through to do what he did for us. That's why he's coming for vengeance. We need it here. So we mustn't be playing games on this. Understand that thing. You understand? Now, go back to Isaiah 58 now. Go back to Isaiah. Okay. Isaiah chapter 58, verse 8. Wait. Then shall thy light break forth as the morning, mm -hmm. and thine health shall spring forth speedily. Wait. And thy righteousness shall go before thee. The glory of the Lord shall be thy re reward. Read it again, verse 8. Isaiah chapter 58, verse 8. Come on. Then shall thy light break forth as the morning. He says there your light. Your light goes into what? Call that. Give me that in Proverbs chapter 6, verse 23. It says then, once you've done all this, it says then your light shall break forth as the morning. Watch this. Read that. Proverbs chapter 6, verse 23. Come on. For the commandment is a lamp, mm -hmm. and the law is light. And the law is light. The law is light. Come on. And reproofs of instruction are the way of life. Go back to Isaiah 58. Read verse 8 one more again. Isaiah chapter 58, verse 8. Mm. Then shall thy light break forth as the morning. That light is the laws of God, is the understanding. It says your understanding will break forth as the morning. You know when the morning comes, 
You understand? The sun is going out. You see the light of the sun. He says your understanding will be just like that. Go ahead. And thine health shall spring forth speedily. And your health, you're going to heal spiritually, mentally, and physically. The Lord says, I'm going to bring forth healing unto you. He's going to bring forth speedily. Ready. And thy righteousness shall go before thee. Thy righteousness. You keeping God's commandments in the spirit of Christ. He says, your righteousness will go forth before thee. You're going to be an example to your brothers and sisters. Read. The glory of the Lord shall be thy re reward. The glory of the Lord shall be thy re reward because we are going to be rewarded again because we love the kingdom. Now we're getting our minds right so we can receive the reward one more again. Come on. Then shall thou call and the Lord shall answer. Mm, read that again. Isaiah chapter 58 verse 9. Come on. Then shall thou call and the Lord shall answer. You see that thing? Then we're going to call and the Lord will answer. Read. Thou shalt cry and he shall say, here I am. You see that thing? Listen, on this day, the most High God says, when you call, I'm going to answer you. When you cry, I'm going to say, here I am. We all want that. Read. If thou take away from the midst of thee the yoke, hmm. the putting forth of the finger, Ray. And speaking vanity. You see that thing? It says, this is what we must do. We must what? For the Lord to answer when we, when we call. And for the Lord to say, here I am when we cry. It says, we must take away from the midst of us the yoke. The pulling forth of the finger. Meaning what? The blame game. And speaking lie. Read. Come on. And if thou draw out thy soul to the hungry. The hungry is our people that are without this too. Read. And satisfy the afflicted soul. We satisfy the afflicted soul because our people are afflicted. They need the laws of God. Come on. Then shall thy light rise in obscurity. Our light, our understanding is going to rise in obscurity. Because why? Hold that. Isaiah 29 verse 18. Then our light will rise in obscurity. Because right now our people, we are what? Their mind is blinded with sin. Okay? Watch this. Isaiah 29 verse 18. Read that for me. Come on. Isaiah chapter 29, verse 18. Read. Right. And in that day shall the deaf hear the words of the book, and the eyes of the mm. blind shall see out of obscurity and out of you darkness. He says, the eyes of the blind shall see out of obscurity. Obscurity is what? Sin. Because we're in the midst of sin, so our vision is, is obscure. The laws of God will remove the obscurity. Then it says, and out of darkness, out of sin, confusion. Okay? Go ahead. The meek also shall increase their joy in the Lord. Mm. And the poor among men shall rejoice in the Holy One of Israel. Because we will receive understanding. The light that will break forth in the morning. Go back to where it was at Isaiah 58. Okay? Read verse 10 again. Isaiah chapter 58 verse 10. Read. Right? And if thou draw out thy soul to the hungry, and satisfy the afflicted soul. Right. Then shall thy light rise in obscurity, and thy darkness be as the noonday. And thy and he says, and thy darkness be as the noonday. Isaiah 59, verse 10. Watch this. Isaiah chapter 59, verse 10. Come on. We grope for the wall like the blind. Start of verse 9. Start of verse 9. Come on. Isaiah chapter 59, verse 9. Read. Therefore is judgment far from us. Mm. Neither does justice overtake us. Because now we are in captivity. Nobody wants to what, fight for our cause. But the Lord is raising us up this day. He's reviving our spirit. Read. We wait for light, but behold, obscurity. You see that thing? We wait for justice. We wait for reparation. But what? But we behold obscurity. The nations don't give a damn about us. Go ahead. For brightness but we walk in darkness. For brightness, you see, we are all, all expecting brightness. We find ourselves in the midst of what? Darkness, confusion, sin. Read. We grow for the wall like the blind, and we grow as if we had no eyes. Mm. We stumble at noonday as in the night. Come on. We are in desolate places as dead men. You see that thing? We grow for the wall like the blind. Because guess what? We're going into different philosophies, you understand, and man-made traditions, 
We are looking for justice. We are looking for deliverance. We are looking for understanding. Why are things, why are we going through this? Why are our people always at the bottom? Why are our people always crying, confused, you understand, afflicted? What's the issue? That's what we're doing. But we're looking for those answers in the wrong places. That's why as we grow as if we had no eyes. Because guess what? We are, our, our vision is obscure. The Lord is saying. We stumble at noonday as in the night. Broad daylight, the Lord says we stumble like he's in the night. We are in desolate places as dead men. The desolate places is slavery, captivity. You understand? Living for the ghettos, for the cars. You understand? That's what he's going into as dead men because we're spiritually dead. Give me that in Proverbs 21, 16. Proverbs chapter 21, verse 16. Read. The man that wanders out of the way of understanding shall remain in the congregation of the dead. Because that's why it says as dead men. Because we wandered out of the way of the understanding that the Lord gave unto us. We remained in the congregation of the dead. Politics, Christianity, democracy. That's the congregation of the dead. You understand? So go back. Isaiah 58, verse 10. Isaiah chapter 58, verse 10. Read. And if thou draw out thy soul to the hungry and satisfy the afflicted soul, then shall thy light rise in obscurity and thy darkness be as the noonday. You see what the Lord is saying? He says, listen, these are all the steps. It says, if thou draw out thy soul, if you draw out thy soul to the hungry, the hungry soul, our people, and satisfy the afflicted soul, you teach them the laws of God, then shall your light rise in obscurity, and thy darkness be as the new day. The Lord says, I'm going to give you understanding. You understand? Go ahead. And the Lord shall guide thee continually. The Lord will guide us continually. Wait. And satisfy thy soul in drought. The Lord will do that thing. He will quench our thirst. Read. And make fat thy bones. Our understanding will grow, come on. And thou shalt be like a watered garden. We are going to be like a watered garden. That, listen, we are going to be what? He says, a garden of understanding. That's what he's talking about, a watered garden. Read on. And like a spring of water whose waters fail not. Whose understanding will not fail. Watch this. Give me that in Psalm chapter 1. We are going to be like a watered garden. You understand? It says what? A spring, like a spring of water, whose water fail not. Let's get the water first and foremost. Get that in Ephesians 5, verse 26. Let's get the water. Okay? Ephesians chapter 5, verse 26. Come on. That he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of water by the word. With the washing of water by the word. So water is the word of God. Go back to Psalms now. Give me Psalms now, chapter 1, verse 3. Psalms chapter 1, verse 3. The Lord says, we shall be like a water garden, like a spring of water whose waters fail not. That's Isaiah 58, verse 11. Now read Psalms chapter 1, verse 3 now. Watch this. Psalm chapter 1, verse 3. Come on. And he shall be like a tree planted mm. by the rivers of water. You see that thing? This man, this woman, is thou like a water garden it says, we shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water. Understanding. Go ahead. That bringeth forth his fruit in his season. That understanding. The fruit in the season is understanding in his due season. Read. His leaf also shall not wither. Our understanding will not fail. Read. And whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. Whatever we do for the nation of Israel, he says, it will prosper. Go back to Isaiah 58, verse 11. One more again. Isaiah chapter 58, verse 11. Come on. And the Lord shall guide thee continually mm -hmm. and satisfy thy soul in drought right. and make fat thy bones. Mm. And thou shalt be like a watered garden and like a spring of water whose waters fail not. Come on. And they that shall be of thee shall build the old waste places. You see what he's saying? Is that they that shall be of thee, meaning the brothers and sisters that will be among us, that will be keeping God's commandments, believing in the in our Lord and Savior Jesus the Christ. It says, They that shall be of thee 
shall build the old waste places. Meaning what? He's building Jerusalem back up. Come on. Thou shalt raise up the foundations of many generations. That's what we be doing right now. Raising up the foundations of many generations. Okay? Because our people are lost and confused. Now, the most High God says, I'm giving you understanding. I want you to go out there and wake my people up. Come on. And thou shalt be called the repairer of the bridge, mm. the restorer of parts to dwell in. You see what he's saying? We are called the repairer of the bridge, the, the restorer of parts to dwell in, because there's a bridge between us and the Most High God. Our job is to repair the bridge, is to repair the bridge. That's our job. Right now we are doing that, repairing the bridge. You understand? Give me that in Amos chapter 9. We are the repairer of this bridge. There's a bridge between us and the Lord. Our job is to repair that thing with the most high God's commandments. Okay? Yeah, I think that's what I want, right? Amos chapter 9. Read verse 11. Amos chapter 9 verse 11. Wait. In that day will I raise up the tabernacle of David that is fallen. The tabernacle of David is the 12 tribes of Israel. The tabernacle of David that is fallen is the 12 tribes of Israel because under King David, all 12 tribes were together and under him prospering. Go ahead. And close up the breaches thereof. You see that part right there? And close up the breaches thereof because there was a breach among the 12 tribes. Give me hold that. Give me Zechariah chapter 11, verse 14. Zechariah chapter 11, verse 14. Zechariah chapter 11, verse 14. Read. Really? Then I cut asunder my other stuff, mm -hmm. even bands. Come on, even bonds. Yeah. The brotherhood is that then I cut asunder my other stuff, even bands, meaning the bonds between the 12 tribes. Read. That I might break the brotherhood between Judah and Israel. That's what the Lord did, that he might break the brotherhood between Judah and Israel. That's why it would take the black Messiah to bring all 12 tribes to, of, of Israel together again as one. One shepherd. You understand? One, one, one shepherd, I'm going to get that because I'm paraphrasing it now. Go back to Amos 9 verse 11. Okay? We're going to get John 10 in a second. Amos 9 verse 11. Let's read that. Amos chapter 9 verse 11. Go ahead. In that day will I raise up the tabernacle of David that is fallen mm -hmm. and close up the breaches thereof. Because God, guess what? There was a breach between us and the Lord. The 12 tribes of Israel, we were divided. There was a split in the nation. Christ will be the one that will bring back all 12 tribes together as one. Go ahead. And I will raise up his wounds. Mm -hmm. And I will build it as in the days of old. The Lord says he's going to build the 12 tribes of Israel as in the days of old. Get that in John 10 verse 16. John 10 verse 16. Read that. John chapter 10, verse 16. Come on. And other sheep I have, mm -hmm. which are not of this fold. That's the northern kingdom. Read. Them also I must bring, and they shall hear my voice. Read. And there shall be one fold and one shepherd. They shall be one fold and one shepherd. One fold, one shepherd. The fold is talking about what? All 12 tribes together as one. One shepherd is talking about who? The black Messiah, Jesus, the Christ. You understand? That's what, that's what this whole thing is about. The Lord says, I'm going to heal you. I'm going to bring you back together. I'm going to raise you up. I'm going to give you understanding. You're going to go out there and wake up the rest of the 12 tribes of Israel. Because why? The kingdom of heaven is at hand. Give me that in Sirach 33. Ecclesiastes chapter 33. This is what we always must remember. What our forefathers did, they were not selfish. It wasn't about them. They understood the bigger picture. Watch this. That's the same thing we must remember this day. Sirach 33, verse 17. Come on. Ecclesiastes chapter 33, verse 17. Read. Consider that I labored not for myself only, mm -hmm. but for all them that seek learning. You see that thing? But for all them that seek learning. So it's not just about you. It's about your nation. It's about your people. It's not about you. Read again. Verse 17. Ecclesiastes chapter 33, verse 17. Mm -hmm. 
Consider that I labored not for myself only, but for all them that seek learning. You see that thing, but for all them that seek learning. Okay, all praises to the Lord. I'm going to end the class right there. I'm going to end the class right there. Let's break bread in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, for laying his life down for the 12 tribes of this. For I have received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto thee, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take it. This is my body, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. After the same manner also he took the cup, when he had served, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye, as oft as ye drink it, in remembrance of me. For as often as ye eat this bread, and drink this cup, ye do show the Lord's death till he come. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread, and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily, shall be guilty of the body and blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of that bread, and drink of that cup. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthy, eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. For this cause, many are weak and sickly among you, and many sleep. In the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Let's give the Lord a hand for that. Open the Lord. Okay.